greatest podcast ever. The realest podcast ever. Y'all's the hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to beat me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. Y'all's the hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to beat me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I had me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. The realest podcast ever. You can never, me and you ain't as clever. It's real. This right here, that gray, they love the chat and man. How real is that? Only family matters, lights I live. What up, what up? We back. The realest podcast ever. Yo, your, niggas can your really. Boy C. Diddy. I'm mad. Yeah, I know what the fuck going on. <laughs> niggas can really rap, yo. Like Brosco and Michael, like listening to these and you like, do you know how good you have to be to like put people names in there and add yeah. little shit that they that that's a, that's a real talent. Yeah, man. Shout out to both of them. Man, for shout both out, shout out Brosco, shout out Mike Cool. We appreciate y'all, man, for the uh, for the intro. Like I can't, I can't rap. What Dame Dash say? I can't rap. But I brought some niggas who can. <laughs> <laughs> them niggas did a song called "I Am Dame Dash." Yes. That that's one of the best moments in rap history, yo. Like I know we hate Dane, well y'all do. Like that to have Jim Jones and Cam come through and rap on your behalf about you is some gangster ass shit. Yes, without a doubt. That was an ill record. Without a doubt. Only for Jimmy to turn around and want to kill Dame years yeah. later, but that's a whole nother story. Some production issues with Vamp Life Clothing. Seven dog, my man, Dane was a cake copper, eighth chopper. Now he got a great chopper. All in Brooklyn, Philly, the whole state's proper. Shrimp and steak, 42nd. We ate lobster. That was an ill song. Crashed up his whip looking back at a bitch. Left it, F it. Good times, man. Oof. I wish The Rock would do a, just a one-time. Yeah, Jay don't even want to see these. Nah, days. Jay, Jay. <laughs> he don't even want to see these. Days. He doesn't even want them in his orbit. <laughs> yeah. But it's just I, at me as a fan, I guess. Yeah, and, and, and it'd be funny because like you see how Dame get annoyed with it every now and then in interviews. Like, why y'all ask me? Ask that man. Don't ask me. Yeah. Nothing. And it's just we grew up with it. You know what Drake said? I used to want to throw the rock up. Like you know, I like yeah. if I had somebody. Uh, in fact, I'm doing a, a show tomorrow in South Carolina. Shout out to uh, Kane. I'm doing that with my with uh, Jules. His man Kane is Abel Jones. But he asked Jules the other day, like, what's your dream game to go to? And I'm thinking about like he was asking like dream sneaker, dream car, dream, and it's yeah. like a dream concert for me at this point in life is a rock reunion, rock reunion, like yeah. a full rock reunion. Yeah, everybody, everybody, the Rangers. I was going to, <laughs> but Christian, Christian can come. I wouldn't mind hearing Rel. bring back your love. I Rel could come. I'm with that. I'm patiently waiting on State Property 3. Yeah, you got a hair but that bread. Yeah, yeah. I watched one and two the other day. The the fact of the matter that this is how much Dame just didn't give a fuck. Angie Martinez is in State Property 1 and 2 as two totally different people. Hold on. Don't don't tell me. In State Property 1, she was the lawyer. No. No. Don't tell me. State Property 1, what was Angie? I'm thinking of... Paper Soldiers when she was the no, I, I'm thinking of Paper Soldiers too. I just fucked up, so she's not in State Property One. Okay, so what is she in State Property Two? She's Nori's girl. One of his. She's Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, right. She's in Paper Soldiers, not State Property. Okay, One. okay. That's what I was yeah, thinking. They of were instantly. making a lot of movies instantly. That's what I thought of her yelling at Kevin Hart. Yeah, and I'm like, no, that wasn't Beans. That was Kevin Hart because essentially, Paper Soldiers <laughs> is in State Property One is the same movie. Hey, man. <laughs> We just was talking about Anchorman being one of the funniest movies oh ever. Apparently, God. someone just got shot outside. <laughs> we we were talking about Anchorman. Listen, Paper Soldiers, <laughs> dog, nonstop, dog. I watched it the other night when they, <laughs> when they went to go rob the crib with um the boy from State Property. It's funny because they you said they were making a bunch of movies. The one that came to testify against Beans. Um, Remember he worked at the paper oh, shop? Caesar. Caesar. What was his name in, in uh, K? In uh, Paper Soldiers. Yeah. Remember they went to go do the robbery with K and he was drunk? <laughs> he was like, yo, it's six fucking 40s there. And I had six fucking people in the car. <laughs> and nigga came back and he drove past the niggas. He's like, what the fuck? That nigga road race. <laughs> and then the funniest part of it, he was looking at him in the rear view as he rode. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> he came back around Kevin Hart was like, stop me, stop me. The white boy put his hands in the hood. You stupid <laughs> OG bitch. <laughs> I was like, man, it's like, where we at, man? It's that fat rapper gallon crib. He said, we can't die to grow. I was like, man, it smell like ass. Did you take a shit? It's cool. It was cool. Favorite soldiers is crazy funny. Yeah, man, he man. took, he took, uh, Kev took Stu Ew. on a John. And yeah, shit. He's like, it's yeah. that fat rapper gallon crib. He like, said, what you doing? He said, it's so a gold record. A gold record. He said, it's not a gold it's record. It's not a gold record. It's just a gold record. He broke, broke it. it. <laughs> These fake fucking rappers. <laughs> Favorite Soldiers is fucking hilarious. I can always yeah, watch all, that. All them life. old Rockefeller films, movies is on yo. stars on demand, yo. That shit is just, yo. it's a riot. Yo, Paper Soldiers is funny as shit, man. State Property 1 was literally just like anything. At least State Property 2 had like real things in it. And it was shot beautifully. It was shot wonderfully. Beautifully that, that, shot. Like, that Edited. quick animation mm-hmm. shit that was, yeah, State Property 2 was dope. I, I like And the tone of it was more like fun. It was than like, like, yeah, it was like a comical relief to the street yeah. shit. Yeah. It was very, very yeah, good. Beans was too gangster in State Property 1. Yeah, a little too much. Yeah. He fucking beat Hutch to death. Fudge. Fudge, yeah. Beat Fudge, Fudge to death. And threw him in a dumpster. Yeah. yeah. Next, right next to the spot where he was hustling. Yeah. Make then it I, make sense. Then I tell you, fudge. <laughs> fudge. Good times, man. We need some more hip hop movies. We always, like, we talk about this shit all the time. Kurt, Kirby playing. Like, I really want to do a remake of Who's the Man. That shit would be a riot. It would be a laugh riot, yo. Absolute laugh riot. Crip Mac in there. <laughs> right. That joint be crazy. Right. That joint would be nuts. Uh, yeah, we need to make that happen. How you feeling today, man? I'm all right, man. I'm chilling. I've been uh, battling a fucking toothache, man. I'm trying to uh, wait for somebody to send me this uh, emergency dentist. I got to get uh, my wisdom teeth, the remaining ones, mm-hmm. uh, removed. This shit is killing me. I've been oh. taking 1,600 milligrams of Aleve every day the last four days because that's the only shit that works. Mm. It's a bad joint. Anybody out there got some perks, holler at me. I need I need them. Like some some pink joints. I'll take some. Michael, go holler at the Rockets coach. <laughs> <laughs> I let the Rockets coach. Uh, I don't know what day it is in the pod realm. Yeah, I don't either. We're like in a pot or whatever fuck we at. pot Uh, I've had nothing really going on. Oh, you want an update on my, my dad's car? Okay. Yeah, he's driving it now. He's, he's on, he took it on the highway. He's on, he's on the move. <laughs> um, I'm getting, I'm getting hourly updates <laughs> on where he's going. All right, going. so I know how to work the sunroof. Yo, now. listen, listen. <laughs> So for, I don't, we haven't discussed it on the main show, the, yeah. the me getting the car or whatever. So I bought my pop a car, you know, whatever. He retired, you know, did a lot for us. I'm just like, yo, when his car went down, I'm like, yo, I'm going to get him a car. You know what I'm saying? So the car we get him is a new Buick Enclave. He's always liked the Enclaves. as He's always said those are super nice, whatever, whatever. And he's at the age now where <clears throat> he doesn't want to get low. He doesn't want to get high. Because I was thinking about getting a Tahoe. But I'm just, yeah. my sister's like, he's going to climb up and then climb out. He doesn't want to do it. I'm like, yeah. okay. So, boom, we go with the Enclave. Nice crossover. Yeah, nice little full-size SUV. It's big, large. Boom. I guess just along the process of it, I just forgot that his last truck was a 04. Right. In fact, it was a 03. He got it in 04. Okay, got it. So, this is a 03. And this car now is 20 years newer than that, John. And he's just like... <laughs> 20 years worth of features. Right. <laughs> this, is a, we're, this, is, this is a generation. <laughs> Essentially. So in the process of us giving him the car, we sitting in the car. He's in the driver's seat. I'm in the passenger seat. He's like, this is this is beautiful. I didn't expect this. This is just amazing. I appreciate it. This is, you know, you outdid yourself. I'm like, yeah, no doubt, you know, you might. But we had, like, real nice, you know, mm-hmm. heart to heart. And he was like, we's like, yeah, we getting ready to get out of My sister was leaving my niece, whatever, whatever. He was like, all right, um, is the instruction manual in the glove box? I'm like, I don't know. And he was like, what do you mean you don't know? Who goes and gets a new car and don't check for the instruction manual? I'm like... I haven't seen instruction manual in 20 years. So I I, I don't know. In my, I'm like, I'm sitting at the glove box. I'm like, it could be in here. Or it could not but be. But it could not be. He's like, I hope you didn't go get a car and they didn't give you no instruction manual. You, you, isn't it like a state requirement? I'm like, I don't think so. But I'm going to open the box. I'm going to pray for the best. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I open it. Instruction manual was in there. Pull it out. I hand it to him. So he's like, okay, well, y'all... Take care of getting back up and take this in the house. I'm like, why are you taking it in the house? What do you mean? I got to rid all this stuff in there. I got to, you know. <laughs> I got to figure out what's going on. I got to figure out what's going on. All the comings and goings. 
So you take the instruction manual in the house. Now that's when I came to record with you that night. Yeah. We recorded around six o'clock. Around ten o'clock that night, he hits me and was like, "Okay, cool. I didn't figure it out of the roof. I'm in mean, first couple of chapters. It's pretty self-explanatory. Some of the stuff. He's like, I did go out and drive it because just to get a feel for it. Um, the reverse is very tricky, but I got it. I'm like, there's nothing tricky about the reverse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The reverse is very, the reverse is very tricky. Because I'm explaining to the jewels of like, you know, the new cars, it's like BMW. Like the paddle, the, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. little quick, like you lean it forward, lean it to the side, lean it back. And I'm like, for him, like a gear shift is like, you got to shift. <laughs> you go into the casino. <laughs> you slot time. What's the shit uh, when, you, when you do the... Uh, the joint at the end of Price is Right, the big wheel. Oh, shit. The, the big joint. You, yeah. like, you, you from here when you yeah. changing the gear. So you with this shit, you lean it to the left. You lean it up and then tap it to the left. That puts it in reverse. So he's like, yeah, you, I figured it out. Like I said, it's tricky, but I figured it out. And then you put it in reverse. Man, the screen's flipping and everything. And it's like it, it shows you the, behind the truck. And it, then it shows you a view of like the the like a, from the top like I'm just the satellites things and all the the stuff they I'm like NASA has nothing to do <laughs> with GM. <laughs> I have yet to see NASA and Buick in cahoots. I've seen no partnerships. I'm like it's cameras around the car. Yeah. He's like what? I'm like yeah, it's a camera in the grill, camera on the sides, camera in the back. He goes and look. Come, oh, you, you can't see it unless you're looking for it. It's a camera in the grill. I'm like. Oh, so my sister like, uh, it's dope that you got him in the car because now not only did you give him a car, you gave him something to do for four to five months. Right. And he's telling me this. I'm like, oh, this is six to eight months. At <laughs> right. least. This is August. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He texted me yesterday. Was like, um, yeah, you know, I was going to go out for a quick little uh, run, but uh, the snow is coming down. So I just figured not to chance it. I'm like, well, it's all wheel drive. So you know what I'm saying? Just in case. He's like, I did see the, all, the AWD on the back of it. So I figured, <laughs> you know, what, what else would that be? <laughs> You know, but I figured why why change? I figured that's for when I get stuck out there and I got to make it back. I'm like, this is going. <laughs> you know, the all wheel drive works all the time. Like it doesn't it, activate. It, it doesn't just pick and choose when it activates. It just works. You know what I'm saying? And, like, uh, and when it snows and rains, it yeah. works better. It's morphing time. Like it, it, it's not that. Bad. Yeah, but he's having the time of his life figuring all that shit out and the. Uh, you know, it's Wi-Fi in there, so that, yeah. and it's crazy because we was talking about it. Like, think about it, if you if you drive a car from 03, Remember, Cassidy was like, your whip was made the same year that you was born, and like, <laughs> if you driving an older whip, you really like new car features. It'll fuck you up. It'll blow you. you know it'll blow you up. Yeah, it'll blow you. Like you, have, I watched the joint. The guy came home from jail. He was in jail for like 43 years, 40, 53 years, whatever it was. He was in there a very long time, and. They showed, like, his peoples was there or whatever, whatever. He got out of jail, and he was, like, wrongfully convicted. Mm -hmm. He got in the car and didn't know how to work the seatbelt. Oh, damn. And it, and it was, like, um, the, 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 or the video article or whatever was, like, man in jail so long, he doesn't know how to work a three-point seatbelt. So I was, like, what is a three-point seatbelt? My dad was, like, a seatbelt. And I'm, like, what the fuck is a three-point? He was, like... Back in our day, we didn't. It was just you know yeah, from here. Wait, yeah. it, was, it was a belt. <laughs> it was just a belt. But the three point is the boom, boom, boom. Right. I'm like, oh, never knew that's what yeah. that was called. But yeah, he been in jail so long, he didn't know how to work a three point seatbelt. Like imagine that, yo. That's like a you hard that, life. Yeah, like you that far behind. Shit is crazy. But all in all, it's been a good week. Yeah, no, that that was dope, man. Uh, you know that you got your dad a car. Um, it's just so funny the updates. Yeah. <laughs> he t- texted me and was like, "Hey, uh, I'm running the CVS. Then uh, if I got some time, I need a new pair of slippers, so I might head over to you know the Kmart's going out of business. So fifty percent. I'm like, why? Are you doing- <laughs> why do I need to do this? <laughs> I'm in the enclave. In yeah. case you was I'm in the. I'm in the enclave. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know, but I've been. And then, they bought me a car. I'm actually driving. And then the video that he posted, dog. My pop posted a video with a uh, with um. Guess who's back? The yeah. stupid dress. <laughs> Still dr. Still dr. <laughs> I said, man, he losing his vibe down there. But yeah, that's been funny as fuck. You know what I'm saying? But uh, other than that, you know, it's been standard trpe shit. Yeah. For you, for those of you, for those of y'all that don't know, we got a live show. It's literally one month away. It's literally a month away. A month away. She crept up on you. Crept up on you. 
We're closing in on 70% tickets sold. Correct. Um, and Live Nation hasn't even kicked in none of their marketing or whatever as far as pushing it to their audience and their people and all of that shit. So if you want to get tickets to the show, I would suggest you buy them sooner than My later. thing is, it's going to the same thing all the time. Yeah. It's going to come. The tickets are going to be gone. People are going to start hitting me. Damn, yo, I, I ain't know. Yeah, there's yo, nothing the I can do for you. And it just be like, man, listen, the tickets is out. Yeah, it's 320 tickets. After that, it's a wrap. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, as we get closer to the drawing, we may pull some tickets to do some giveaways, stuff like that. But I got a couple of tickets in reserve from people I know who already bought them that can't come because they in other parts of the yeah. planet. So, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's like, you know, the people that aren't in the immediate area, they feel more urgency to buy the tickets to give them to us so we can give them away than crazy? people that are here. Nuts, yo. Like last show, we had my man, shout out my man Mo, uh, Mo Jizzle. He's over in Kuwait right now. He bought tickets for us to fucking give away. Uh, my other people's, uh, my man uh, Ahmad down in uh, VA, he bought tickets. <laughs> he was like, yo, I ain't going to be able to make the show. Make sure you get these tickets away, whatever the case may be, like things like that. So it's like, yo, our people that aren't in the immediate Philadelphia tri-state or whatever, or four-state radius of Philadelphia, they are fucking buying tickets and, and, and helping us be able to facilitate giveaways to where we still don't lose no money. And then people that are here... In the market is like, oh shit, you got a show today? Yeah. That's today? Yeah. We sold out two weeks ago. You lying. At the last show, she was like, well, you got to equate for walk ups. I'm like, ain't going to be no walk ups. Ain't no walk ups. We have 50 some walk ups at the last show. It's like, that's not going to pop this time. No. You're going to walk up and walk back. <laughs> right? I'm telling you. Yeah, Gordon, you in? Gordon, you out. Gordon, you out. <laughs> Yeah, it's not it's not gonna go that way. So just to you know to save the BS, make sure y'all go to Ticketmaster.com, search TRPE. Just type in it'll the pop right up. Realist. That's it, it, it. Just type in TRP, four yeah, letters. Real it, shit. Shit pop right up. Tickets is twenty nine dollars. The last tickets to the other live show, the VIP show, was way more. We included more and all of these tickets are way cheaper. Um, make sure y'all get y'all tickets, man. So if y'all haven't yet, go to Ticketmaster.com, search TRPE, go to punchlinephilly.com, Sunday, February sixth. Uh, TRPE five year anniversary show. Uh, what time we, is the show? Eight. Uh, eight thirty, and we're going to start on time. Doors doors open at seven thirty. Show start at eight thirty. We are starting on time. I got confirmation from Southern Wine and Spirits. We're going to have two different. Oh, yeah, we got two liquor sponsors. two liquor sponsors for that night. Two different promos. One is going to be like a sampling or a tasting where they're going to have the girls come and uh, Brad Diddy. Come on, Brad. Brad Diddy. Oh, Brad Diddy. Try and get in for for free. <laughs> To no. something, to something free. Yeah. Uh, no, bro, did he? So, uh, yeah. So we're gonna have like a sample and a tasting of one brand, and then another brand is gonna be, um, you know, basically like specialized drinks or whatever, like TRPE, different cocktails. You know what the funny like part that. about Bra Diddy is, bro, you'll see Bra Diddy in a three piece suit and wingtips in the club. Then you'll see him in the actual courtroom with Jordans and a New Balance sweatshirt. You just be like, Bra Diddy is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Bra Diddy is crazy. <laughs> Bra Diddy makes no sense after time. Yeah, so uh, so that's so that's going to be like you know that we're going to have exclusive merch. Uh, we're going to have exclusive merch uh, available for sale for this event. We're going to have hats and uh, hats, shirts, and probably hoodies also. Um, we're going to figure that out in the next few days or whatever like that. We got a super exclusive design that we that we uh, that we have that's going to be this event only. Same way last show. This for specifically for that event. Same thing. Well, they don't suck. I just look retarded and all of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. And um, also, I just had a conversation with, uh, with, with uh, shout out Will the other day. Uh, I had a conversation with him. We're going to be doing some uh, TRPE, like, flash drops for, like, merch and stuff like that. Like, more fashion type drops with, you know, TRPE, stuff like that. Limited runs, 40, 50 pieces. Once they go on, they go. We're going to be trying to start, you know, doing that type of stuff every month also. So that's going to be some other stuff that we got going on. And uh, the tour. Tour is coming up. Uh, the goal is to go out starting the end of March, pretty much being a different market um, through Memorial Day. Uh, we got seven markets that we identified. And then, um, oh, yeah, the Philly show is off the tour. Philly show is going, the next Philly show after February is not going to be till sometime in the summertime. So if y'all want to be a part of the Philly show, make sure that y'all there February 6th because there isn't going to be another one until at least middle of June. I was going to say later than that, probably. Yeah, probably later than that, but at least middle of June because we're trying to do something big for Philly the next time we uh, do a live show here. So we got to build that demand back up. So uh, probably like around in middle, middle of June to around July 4th sometime is going to be like the next Philly show. 
I was going to say closer to the end of the summer, but yeah. Yeah, so somewhere in that ballpark or whatever. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, so we got all the markets itemized. We finalizing these venues, stuff like that. We're going to be in Brooklyn. We're going to be um, in Delaware for sure, Charlotte, Atlanta, Houston, Miami, and um, oh, and DC. Can't forget DC. Got a couple different venues for DC. Um, it's just going to ultimately come down to. Uh, you know, which one makes the most sense, but we got a few different venues and we just trying to figure out the right capacity and all that to pretty much like guarantee a sellout. So TRP tour is a real thing. It's happening. Shout out my bro, uh, Veli that's helping us out. He's a, you know, a Titan and a, a, a industry vet of, uh, putting together independent tours and stuff like that for artists. This is going to be his first podcast tour. It's going to be our first podcast tour, but we coming together to make this shit pop. So it's going to be dope. Jules the other day was like, um, <clears throat> Do you feel successful with the podcast and shit? And I'm like, what do you mean? And he was like, y'all are like, y'all are doing it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like he's like, dog, like people be hitting me left and right about the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they meant, you know, so and so mentioned you on the Jones. So and so. Like, do you feel accomplished in it? I'm like, not really. I'm like, we doing our uh, thing. You still know, got, what I'm still got a lot more work to do. And he was like, when do, when do you think it'll it'll feel like yo we made it? And I'm like, uh. When me and you are in a phantom right. doing cocaine <laughs> and you're going to Chad and Big Dan and demanding that we go on as Matt Cain in the realest podcast ever, <laughs> that's when it'll hit me. He's like, I can't, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I can't be, <laughs> I can't be serious with you. I'm like, I'm, I'm, you asked me, I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? Beanie Siegel and state property. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what the, like, what the fuck? That, that's with. But no, all jokes aside, it's dope to, uh. See where we are and uh, how we're rolling. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of progress. Um, twenty two is looking positive, man. Yeah, uh, you know we got the Crip Mac episodes available everywhere now. Spank episodes available everywhere now. Two really dope, two really different interviews or whatever like that. So make sure y'all go check those out if y'all haven't already. Uh, rolling out a new promo. YouTube, we got to get this YouTube popping. Mm-hmm. We need ten thousand subscribers in YouTube by June. Right now we. Edging tour 5,000. Uh, shout out to Crip Mac. He's really pushing that interview strong. That's getting us a lot of subscribers. We had about 400 subscribers this week just off of Crip Mac right, alone. Right, right. I saw that. Shout out, to, shout out to him. Shout out to that. That interview is doing phenomenal numbers. Um, we want to get to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube by June 1st. If we make it to 10,000 subscribers by June 1st, Uh-oh. I will put another $1,000 out there in addition to the $1,000 for the Patreon hitting 500. Now, this is your own thousand. My own thousand. Okay. So, I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> Another thousand dollars. <laughs> Sounds for, good to me. <laughs> for for 10,000 for, for 10, subscribers on YouTube. So, YouTube is the realest podcast ever, or you could just search TRPE. The whole channel pops up or whatever. It's the one with the black and red logo, not the black and white logo. All of the new stuff is on that, is on that page. Uh, so, make sure y'all go subscribe, share, help spread the word. We hit 10,000 subscribers. I'm paying out $1,000 on the spot. We ain't got to wait for no onboarding period and all that shit like Patreon. $1,000 on the spot. As soon as we hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, the goal is to get there by June. So Y'all sure heard y'all, it. Y'all participate in that. Chad Fain. $1,000. Cash money. Is giving out a stack if we get to 10K subscribers on YouTube. Big facts. You I'm in see? that too. And you're still getting the stack. <laughs> <laughs> And then, again, we got the Patreon giveaway also. We hit 500, but we did not stay there. Uh, I think Patreon is sabotaging y'all a little bit. We spoke about it the other day on the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Patreon is sabotaging y'all just a tiny bit. But even still, we are, we close to about 470. Uh, we need to hit and stay. I've said this constantly since the beginning. Stay at, fi- at 500. We have not done that yet. Right now, we have 468. So... We need to onboard 32 more patrons, and then we will give out that money, guaranteed. Yeah, it'll probably be before the end of this month. Yeah, we'll Maybe give out that, that money. That's going to be $500 two times, which equals another $1,000. So all in all, we got two grand out there at stake that y'all could potentially get. Make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube, subscribe to the Patreon, and um, let's get let's help, help us get y'all paid. What if one person wins all the shit? Hey, man, you know, if they, if they end up cleaning up, that would be wild. That'd, that'd be wild. You know what I'm saying? But there'll be more money. It'll be bigger money as we hit bigger goals. So yeah. when we hit a thousand people on Patreon, I haven't quite figured it out yet. I'm thinking like, like five racks. 
Again, this is you by yourself. <laughs> Thinking like five okay. days. Chad is on fire today. Yeah, we, we hit we hit we hit a thousand on Patreon. A thousand on Patreon. Five racks ain't wild. Think of five racks. Yeah, it's not wild. Think of five racks. I was gonna say like remodel a kitchen. But <laughs> That's right. gonna be way more than five racks. Yeah, kitchens ain't cheap now. <laughs> kitchens apparently. are very expensive, and lumber lumber is through the roof, and so is uh, granite and, and marble countertops. Wouldn't that be some crazy shit? Like you put up twenty dollars and twenty one cents a month and win five thousand dollars. That'd be nuts. That's lit. See what I'm saying? Now. I am a Patreon. Me. <laughs> you have your own. I have my own Patreon. Like if my elevator, you cannot win. Okay, Dan, you cannot win. Dan, that was my next. Question. <laughs> Dan was out. Gonna ask right now. Anybody from TRPE staff cannot win. But we got to deal with what we got in front of us first. Yo, when you see a new Patreon tomorrow, <laughs> Cap you main. <laughs> Nigga in it to win it. Who can work? <laughs> who can work? <laughs> 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 Not hookah ball, hookah worker. <laughs> hookah employee. Yo, that's hookah intern. Shit. Hookah intern. <laughs> Real talk. So we going to get y'all these, you know, I said a thousand and a thousand and then at a thousand on Patreon, I'm thinking five racks. I, I think that's fair. That's that's not wild. That's not wild. You figure? That's not wild. Two thirds of our supporters on Patreon are all on VIP tier. It's not wild. It's we not just wild. wouldn't make no money that much. <laughs> no, we would still make it. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> we would still make it. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. Uh, so I've had, I've had some months where I made nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, that all right. I'm with it. We can book it. Five racks. Five racks. You're still the YouTube is all you know. <laughs> but five racks. We'll give away five thousand dollars if we hit a thousand on Patreon. That's crazy. It's dope. We hit a thousand and y'all get five thousand. Well, you just want to do one person five thousand. One person five thousand, all or nothing. That's lit. Five racks. I hope somebody I know. Ain't with it. listen. Ain't no. I'm speaking in the camera. Ain't no motherfucking podcast, YouTube channel, none of that shit out there. Ain't gave no, y'all five thousand dollars. It, it hasn't happened. I'm subscribed to all these channels. It hasn't happened. Five thousand cash money. Do they still do publishers clearinghouse? Fuck no. No. He died. That McMahon is very dead. He died? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure he died. He's good. And, he was good and old. Yeah. He lived, a, he lived a, a fantastic life. You know, Bob Barker's still alive. Is he? I think. We gonna Don't get... <laughs> <laughs> you know Bob Barker alive. I think. You know what I'm saying? I want to say Bob Barker is still alive. He is very much alive. I think, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that was a question. People ask, is Bob Barker still alive in 2021? As of December 12, 2021, Bob Barker is very much alive. He celebrated a quiet birthday at home. He had his 98th birthday. 98. Shout out to Bob. Probably, probably still out here catching the neck from young bitches and everything at, oh. at the ripe, ripe young age of 98, man. That, that, that skinny microphone didn't, you know, weigh him down. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> No arthritis to worry about. None of that shit. Remember his microphone used to be like a yeah. car antenna? Like the antenna off my dad explorer. That joint, you go to the car wash, they tell you to unscrew it. Yeah. And like, we are not responsible. Bob in the back smacking yeah. bitches. What the fuck was that shit? Remember, he went through a whole joint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the, the lovely Diana, he was uh, harassing her every yeah, day. Yeah, of course. I remember uh, Paul Moody and Stand Up said he, she was suing him for $10 million because he forced her to give him head every day for 10 years. And uh, she was saying when she, she got her, her knees x ray, she ain't had no cartilage. Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> get a throw pillow, man. God damn. And, and said she wanted $10 million when they presented Bob Barker with the lawsuit. He said, $10 million. The retail price of that pussy is $49. <laughs> <laughs> Just give her the 40 bucks. Uh, nobody caught that joke, but that was hilarious when he, <laughs> he said it. It's a price is right joke. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, Bob Barker still alive. Speaking of which, Betty White passed away this week. Oh, man. I hate to segue from, you know, yeah, sexual wh- wh- abuse to Betty, Betty White. Rest in peace, Betty White. She was, I was about to she say was, Betty White. Yeah, she was too trill, man. Betty White was a trillist. She was a trillist. She was only a few days away from her 100th birthday, She too. tweeted it, that the Pe- People magazine was doing something special for her 100th birthday, and then... Kicked the bucket, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So rest in peace to Betty White. Um, a true legend. Yeah, definitely. When I started, I watched a short on all the things she did, like all the little groundbreaking things she had going on and doing. And I was like, man, like Betty White was super duper true. The um somebody else passed away this week too. Uh, Sydney Poitier. 
Sidney Poitier. Sidney Poitier, first black actor to win an Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. Legend. Rest in peace to Sidney. Sidney. And he was very integral, but a lot of people don't know him, along with Harry Belafonte, Muhammad Ali, very integral in the black civil rights movement during Mm -hmm. the, during the sixties and seventies and all of that shit. Like they, you know, they, they put their careers on the line for, for black rights. And, um, you know, they, they put their money where their mouth was. Yeah. You gotta see Jamie Foxx (coughs) impersonate Sidney Poitier. He sounds, it's it's unbelievable how good he is at this shit. Like it's scary. Yeah. Yeah, rest in peace, Cindy Potier. Rest in peace, Bet- Betty White. I feel like somebody else died this week, too. Let's see. I might be making that up. Maybe I was just watching a movie. Yeah, I can't think of nothing. That's in 2022. John Madden. John Madden. I'm like, John I know Madden. it's somebody else. I'm like, not thinking of it. We, oh, you know, we ain't do nothing. You ain't do it, yeah. yeah. The reality of it is not trying to be funny. I thought John Madden had already passed away. I did, too. Yeah. I ain't gonna hold you. I thought that's why they stopped yeah, making the too, video games. That's why he wasn't doing Monday no more. Yeah, I, I, I just thought that's why they wasn't doing the video games and shit. Because yeah. they don't do Madden no more, do they? No. I ain't think so. Oh, yeah, no, they don't. Now. now it's called 2K and something else or whatever they got, I think. Yeah. No, they still got people on cover, man. Are we lying? Are, they? <laughs> Are we lying? <laughs> We're doing a lot of lying this week. Yeah, I, I, I jinxed the show with the state property shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, still alive. Yeah, man, 22 release date. Dan Reeves died too. Uh, Atlanta, yeah. uh, Atlanta Falcons football coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Mahomes is Took on him to the, the Super Bowl. Mahomes is on, man. Mahomes and Brady. Yeah, man. Uh, That's 2K that 22. they stopped. I low key thought you had just said Mahomes died. And I was about to say, well, there goes my future. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> I was about to say, damn. That, that goes, would be bad. There, <laughs> goes, there goes that. Kim. Oh. Kim Mi Soo. I thought I said Kim Jong. Kim Mi Soo is a Korean film star. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Yeah. Peter Bogdanovich has died so far. I know that name. Yeah, he's a uh, a director. You've seen him before. Yeah, I've seen yeah. him before. 22 is off to a wild start. Yeah, no, it definitely is. It definitely is. It's not quite a uh, 2021 hold my beer yet. No. It's, we haven't gotten that far, but... Uh, ah, word to Rob. Max Julian. The Mac. The Mac. The Mac died. I'm not... I, yo. Oh. Put some, play some pimping, man. Yeah. You ain't no pimp. You're a rest haven for hoes. You're a car thief. <laughs> like, yeah, man. Yeah, Max Julian passed away. But it's just like, yeah, 22 is off to a wild start. Did you see they had the uh, the um, anniversary of the insurrection? Yeah, I, were they celebrating? Like, what was I, don't, I don't know why they were doing this. <laughs> like, but we should not be talking about this. On, on Good Day America, Good Morning America, yeah. all that shit. They was, the, you know, one year since the, the insurrection, John. And I'm, like, looking back on it, and I'm just like, yo, white people really had enough of that shit. And was like, we're going in. We're taking this country back. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, watching it the other day, I'm just sitting there like, none of these people are like, in a militia or trained just regular just humans. white <laughs> regular poor white people just, like they weren't tactically trained on how to break into a federal building or they just walked the fuck yeah they had the one john the funniest moment of the whole shit the chick was scaling the yeah. scaling the wall and got and, right yeah, that one arm lift away <laughs> And fell and hit that bike rack. Boop! I'm like, oh my god! I remember somebody took a picture of one of the, it was like this old white lady, like with like dingy jeans and a beat up Alabama hoodie. And somebody was like, "Meemaw having the time of her life." Tonight. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they don't know anything, man. They really ran up in the state capital. Yeah, a couple like, of them got their tops popped. Oh yeah, yeah, rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, y'all did too much, man. It did too much. The, the the white lady that got killed in the process, the, the guard shot her or whatever. Mm-hmm. There was a video of her like, "We're taking this country back, and ain't nothing that could stop us at all. Nothing will stop us. I guarantee it." Somebody had made a meme where it was a bullet in Jordan's seat. It was like, "I took that person." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" I took that personal. <laughs> but 
Lord, it was really a bullet with hands. <laughs> I took that. I pers- took that personal. I like yo. I absolutely love Twitter, man. Twitter is the craziest shit on earth. Still. The best part of the insurrection was it was black people in the crowd. Yeah, they didn't bring their black asses inside. They knew not they knew to. not to come on federal property. I'm, I, mean, I ain't fucking Biden, but I ain't going to fuck. <laughs> fuck your Stop the steal, but y'all yeah, taking it too far. I'm man. not going in that motherfucker. Oh, wilding in this joint tonight. Yo, the favorite part of my week, there was a viral tweet. I know you've seen it. Did y'all really think Trump was funny? Question mark. I didn't see that. Oh my god. The quote tweets and the, and the Oh, I know that was hilarious. My nigga, they had the joint where he was Steph Curry with the fucking yeah. uh, paper towel <laughs> in Puerto Rico. <laughs> they had that joint. They had <laughs> Yeah, I forgot all about that. That's they had another shit. one where he was like, uh, I want to I want to quote this shit word for word. I do not want to fuck up, man. This motherfucker said He said uh, Why would Kim Jong insult me Calling me old When I would never call him short and fat Oh well I try so hard to be his friend And maybe someday that will happen <laughs> this, this, this is my favorite one Barney Frank looked disgusting Nipples protruding in his blue shirt before Congress Very very disrespectful <laughs> This one is fake, but this is great. The doctor said they've never seen a body kill the coronavirus like my body. They tested my DNA, and it wasn't DNA. It was USA. It was USA. <laughs> Yo, I remember that. That turned one. out to be fake, but it still doesn't change how funny it was. When they said that he was going to wear the Superman shirt under his jaw. They was like, that's yeah, a bad nah, don't idea. Do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it, Unc. Yeah. Trump was really hilarious, man. Put him in our jails. They were probably sent here so that we put them in our jails. Because to put them in our jails, they didn't pay the electric bill. To put them... Oh, I like that much better. Oh. Somebody said he was a generational talent. Oh. Oh. Like, not trying to be funny, yo. Do you know how hard... Like, think about Boosie, right? Like, Boosie go hard and they ban him on the gram, mm-hmm. right? Think about... Mitch, Mitch Gohar, BF on IG Live. They ban him from going IG Live. Can keep his gram though. Think about uh, you, old you on Twitter. Twitter. You go hard. They get you out get of you Twitter. Out of here. You know how hard you got to go to get banned on all that shit. The the internet and the metaverse. The whole job. <laughs> Whatever is after the internet, you can't come on that shit. I've I, the uh, you know how the memories come up. Yeah. On uh, on your IG story, John, I saw the other day on my memories when you was T'Challa, T'Chatta, T'Chatta, yeah. <laughs> T'Chatta. <laughs> I saw a memory of your John, and, and the, the tweet was, um, "I miss the days when you cheat on a girl and she heartbroken and stay in the house and cry. Now they just go fuck your dad." I'm like, "Yeah, see, that, <laughs> that's why. That's why he used to get kicked off of Twitter all the time." I see that shit and burst the fuck. <laughs> These bitches are savages. Yo, now they just go fuck your dad. Oh man, like, another, another Trump classic. North Korean leader Kim Jong Un just stated that the nuclear button is on his desk at all times. Will someone from his depleted and food star regime please inform them that I too have a nuclear button, but it is much bigger and more powerful than his, and my button works. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, you know, they had to, you know, that's a little alarming, but I keep that thing on yeah. me, too. They had that yeah. in the, under the comments underneath it. The, uh, the, the funniest part, remember when they had the fake Trump tweet creator? Yes. Where you, like, that? that's how wild it was. Like, you could go in and just make any tweet look like a Trump tweet because it, like, it looks realistic. You yeah, know what they I mean? had another one. They said, bro, when he smoked the Iranian leader and let them know who did the drilling on Twitter by throwing a pixelated flag up, I knew this man yeah. was different. Flag pixelated like shit. No, Trump was nuts, man. <laughs> USA. Trump was off the chain. ASAP Rocky released from prison and on his way home to the United States from Sweden. It was a rocky week. Get home, ASAP. ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> I never even seen that joke. This man is great. <laughs> Trump ridiculous. Great. That's funny as shit. Get home, ASAP. ASAP. This man called Joe Biden's son a Cokehead at a debate. At the debate. Yeah. At the debate. At the debate. Yeah. Unk never coming back. 
But you know, it was fun while it lasted. Well, they said he lead the leading all polls, right? <laughs> Yeah, but the reality of it is he's not going to get back in that office. I, I I can't see that possibly. He got my vote. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people, but it, it just, I, I, shit would burn down. It, it would it would be just too much chaos. I can't see that happening. But So let's get this right. Steve Jobs dies and leaves his wife everything, billions of dollars. Now his wife has a boyfriend, lover. Oh, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see this. Oh, Steve. Oh, Steve. (laughs) Hey, man, what the fuck, yo? This man is great. Damn, Trump was crazy. Oh, Steve. (laughs) Mm -mm -mm. So let me get this straight. (laughs) That clip we posted on the uh, Punchline, John, with the Kamala uh, said uh, America is not racist. That's still one of the funniest Jones ever. Like, I wish we had what's the name's audio. Taylor's. Taylor's audio, like his initial response, like what? Yo, <laughs> we're going to get Taylor up here one of these days. Yes, we got to do that. Bring Taylor back up. Yeah, the picture when Trump had all the fast food. Yeah, the McDonald's at the, at the and White shit. House, Wendy's, and McDonald's. And Crazy Popeyes. as shit. The um, pervert alert at Rep Wiener is back on Twitter. All girls under the age of eighteen block him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Y'all really thought Trump was funny. Yeah, yeah, bitch. Trump was fucking hilarious, man. The um what was I about to say? Has Biden done anything ridiculous this week? Nah, he's been chilling, man. I felt like he did say something though. Uh let's see what Byron got going on. Joe Biden. I feel like he said something the other day. Maybe that was last week. It's all jamming together mm-hmm. right now. Like I want to say Ra had said something to us about it. Oh, about uh, oh, about the Google and the uh, yeah, Google your test Google, center. Google your test center. <laughs> this is an official statement from Whitehouse.gov. The second thing I want to mention is many state and local governments and healthcare providers are passing out free at-home tests that you can pick up. Just find out where they are. Somebody, the person captioned that posted this said, "Joe Biden, I have hidden five rapid tests and chocolate bars across the country. <laughs> the winners will receive a full tour of my factory as well as a lifetime supply of chocolate." <laughs> I've hidden just in five chocolate bars. <laughs> hey, yo. The craziest shit is now, you know, they the uh, the feds opened up the testing center out Southwest, right near my old block. I lived yeah. on 77 viewers. They did it at what we used to call White Boy, Elmwood, at uh, Sabati. That's, one of the, that's the federal testing center for the city. They said they can do 750 tests a day. And I'm just like, it's crazy to think that these they got these testing sites all over. The lines are long as fuck. It's nonsense. It's, a, it's at least a, a six hour commitment if you need to get a COVID test. Yeah, at yeah. least. Yeah. I know somebody waited eight hours the other day to take a COVID test. And it's so bizarre that you need. What What are the reasons that people are needing to go get them? Uh, I mean, p- people are getting sick like a motherfucker. Like you know, like all right, like in the last week, New York has basically been breaking every day. New York has been breaking their own record every day with new reported COVID cases. Did you They're notice Toronto didn't have people the other night at the game? No, I didn't. When I was looking at the highlights, because you know Fred Van Vliet got his first uh, triple double of his okay. career. When Shout I was looking Van at the Vliet. highlights, it was like nobody in the stands. I'm like, what the fuck is going on today? So they're back playing in Toronto. That's what I'm saying. They were playing in the 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 the, 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 the Nova Scotia Center or whatever yeah. the fuck it was called. It looked like yeah, because last year there was the Tampa Bay, uh, the Tampa Bay Raptors. I'm gonna keep going, keep talking about your right. shit, which is testing shit. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. So uh, so at, like you know, so like New York every day has been basically like reporting twenty three thousand plus cases every day, every day, every day of uh you know people that have COVID and um. They basically said they're saying now like the home tests are pretty much completely inaccurate. I know somebody that took two home tests, both came back negative, went and took a test at a testing center, positive for COVID. Uh, but she was vaccinated, so you know she ended up being cool. Basically, no symptoms whatsoever, like a slight like some throat irritation and like you know nose was bothering her for like two days, and then now she fucking cool. But uh, yeah, so I mean, motherfuckers are are are, are catching that thing, you know what I mean, left and right right now, and. Uh, they just don't have enough tests and all that shit to keep up with it because they set shut all the damn testing centers it's, down when the fucking, you know, when COVID was going down in the summer months. It's unbelievable how I feel right now, but it's just so sad to not be able to share with my folks. 
Words spoken from point guard Fred Van Vliet after his career night, first triple-double of his career in an empty uh, Scotiabank arena, um, seeing as though whatever the fuck this is, restrictions are limited in Toronto right now to 1,000 people oh, for damn. at least three weeks. So, but I'm watching, I'm like, yo, why isn't it, like, when he actually got the assist, I'm like, there's, there's nothing. <laughs> right. It's like they were at a scrimmage. Damn. And the, yeah, so they're saying that, like, I'm looking at it now, the, um, that's how it looked when he hit the triple double. Like, it was literally empty in the arena. It was only, like, the announcers and, like, the, the Damn. yeah. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, yo, that's not even nowhere near a thousand people. No, no, no. This is like a couple hundred. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah, they're limiting it to a thousand people in uh. Toronto again. So, yeah, no, this the you know they they have right now you got the the Omicron you got the Delta. There's another strain that was discovered in uh, in London the other day. I don't even know what the fuck the name of that is. You I H U I H U. Then you got the the Flovid or the Florona, which is mm-hmm. the flu and COVID mixed together. Uh, so it's it's just a bad time right now. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers are getting sick. The good thing, and I was saying this before we start recording, the good thing is that majority of people are vaccinated, so people's symptoms are, like, not that bad for right. the most part. You know what I'm saying? But motherfuckers are catching that shit. <clears throat> um, Pennsylvania, uh, in F- Pennsylvania, yes, P- all of Pennsylvania, not just the, uh, the not just Philadelphia, but uh, basically put in uh, – COVID vaccine mandate to sit any indoor facility, mm-hmm. basketball game, restaurant, all At that At the shit. Sixers game the other night. See, I don't know which way you came in. I came in through, I think, 114. No, no, I where mean, the, like, from outside. Where the, flag, where the flags was at. That the way we left out is the way I came in. Oh, no. See, I came in on Broad Street side. Okay. And they stopping you at the door. Like, at the door. It wasn't like that before. Yeah. Like last couple games, you could get in. You didn't have to show it till you went to go get your band okay. for the court side shit. That was when you got to show yeah, your no, card. They hit me for the card outside. Yeah, because the one boy he showed him and his his daughter and his son car. The son's second shot was within the last two weeks. They wouldn't let him in. Oh damn! They was like, no, you gotta go like down there. And Remember get a that? Test. Yeah, they had to send it. He had to go back. And he's like, come on, man, y'all blood sucking. Like, what the fuck? Like, no. And I'm just like, hey, let's see. Yeah, like, <laughs> excuse me, big man. Yeah, 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 ain't gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, nah, they they really on it now. It's like, yeah, fucked up. But mm-hmm. yeah, man, that's where we at. But I'm over COVID. I don't want to talk about it no more. Yeah, for sure. I'm I mean, I, at this it. point, it's just a matter of I'm just waiting on Pfizer to drop this COVID killer so we can just all be over this shit. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm shit passed the third trials. It's approved by whoever fuck needs to approve it. CDC, USDA, whoever fuck needs to approve this shit. Mm. Food and Drug Administration. It's it's coming out. It's just a matter of when and how much you know how fast they can produce the shit. Right. But once this COVID killer pill drops, it's a wrap. Everybody yeah. gonna be back to eating ass in public and yeah. whatever fuck wild dumb shit we was doing. Uh, pre uh, October 2019. Absolutely. So, um, good times. What what you got over there, topic? All right. So, uh, young, we haven't really we haven't really talked about this in the last few days. There has been headway on uh, young Dolph's killer. Okay. There is a formal charge. Uh, the young man, I believe his name is Josh Jackson. Okay. Uh, all AKA a rapper named Straight Drop. Who was affiliated with Dolph, with okay. Key Glock, and with PRE, and they're saying that he was the trigger man um, in the crime. They are putting this shit on him, and um, mm. the latest update is that he has contacted Memphis PD and said, "I will turn myself in on Monday. Let me get the weekend out. Fuck with some hoes, get my affairs in order, and I'll see you niggas on Monday." And apparently, he's supposed to turn himself in. So it's a situation where, you know, when, when Dan sent us the, uh, the you know, the, the breaking news or whatever, it's a situation where it's like you go through the slideshow and then you start realizing, like, damn, like this kid was literally, and he's a kid, he's 23 years old. This kid literally was around Dolph, around the whole situation, <clears throat> put a chain on his neck, he had plenty of money, all of this old shit, and it's like, mm-hmm. it's one of them situations where it's like, you know, the boosty hypnotized with hatred comes to mind, where it's like, yo, even when you help a motherfucker, it still ain't enough. It's still resentment. It's still not appreciating, you know, your contribution to the quality of life. And to the point where a motherfucker will convince themselves or allow others to convince them that they should kill you. 
And <clears throat> Dolph, for all he did and all the things that's coming out now by what we know, him owning a hundred something properties and you know, supporting all these black businesses and all the people that he helped and this and this and this. And it's almost like another Nipsey situation. And it's like, yo, he was worth way more to the whole community alive than dead for way more than his music. Like throw the music shit aside, mm-hmm. the music and they, the music and his success in music enabled him to have the funds to be able to do all the other community activities and purchasing homes and all of that old shit that he was doing. And Everybody that speaks on the man has nothing but good things to say about him, exception of black youngster. That's another thing we'll get into at the mm-hmm. end of this. Um, and it's just like, why? You know what I'm saying? And it's like one of them things where it's like, yo, we continue to just perpetuate this cycle of senseless violence and we're killing the people that are basically sent here to save us. Mm-hmm. Like my black people complain about not having uh you know, our communities look a certain way, this and this, and <clears throat> why that, and the white man holding me back, and blah, blah, blah. And then you literally have somebody that's employing 50-plus people from the hood, fucking creating affordable housing for people to have places to live. I know he got different people living rent-free in some of his cribs, all of that shit. And y'all go kill the man. You know not to get me started with this. <laughs> y'all go kill the man. Like, over, at some point, we may or may not never know the motive, because we don't know the motive you know, on the true motive on the Biggie and Tupac. Well, we know Tupac's motive. We, we still don't know the Biggie shit. It's, it's it's all mucked up. And I just watched City of Lies last night, and it got even more mucky yeah. all over again after watching that. Because I thought for sure that Poochie did the shit, and now I'm like, well, maybe Amir Muhammad did do it. So we don't know. Mm-hmm. So this is another one of those situations where it's like, yo, you take this, this hyper-successful person that's not just helping himself, literally helping everybody around him, and the shit especially hurt me because I know them guys. I did business with them guys, with Dolph and daddy and all that. Like, they good people. They solid people. They take care of everybody the fuck around them. Like, they not no selfish niggas. So it's like, for you to kill Dolph, it's like, for what? And then to find out that you was close to him, it's just like, that's just a super sucker move. And it's just like, it, it's even... It's even more disappointing than if somebody that had a legit problem with him did it because it's like you manufactured an issue to convince yourself I should kill this nigga. He he wasn't with Dolph no more. Clearly, correct. That, has it been said or or what was the not reason? yet? Because the whole thing was whatever happened, it was like an immediate like thing because. Within the recent months, he was seen wearing a chain and this, like, he was still repping. So now, it's like, well, what the fuck happened in the month or whatever, two since y'all split, that you was like, I'm killing this nigga. Like, that's an extreme circumstance. So mm-hmm. like, I'm killing a national hero, a community fucking hero. The, the, the reality superstar. of it is, though, is just like what, what Carl said, like, we're so desensitized that it's like, it don't even got to be a crazy situation. Right. It don't got to be some drastic, dramatic, you know, life altering. It could just be, I ain't like the way he talked to me. Right. And you Fuck know. this bitch has nigga think he is. That's it. It's fucked up. It's a super fucked up situation, man. And, um, you know, hopefully we get to the bottom of this shit, the root of the issue of the, you know, of the why. Um, allegedly, you know, they, you know, they, they, it was multiple shooters. They, they're, the, the streets are saying. Them other two niggas are dead already. <laughs> like they, he's the he's the lone one that survived because he got out of town when all of the bullets start flying back in their direction. And basically, like the other niggas that was involved, they all did. So he's gonna be the only one that's gonna end up getting charged with this shit unless he makes like a full confession and then states all of the who, what, when, where, and why. But even still, you still getting 20, 25 years of premeditated murder. Like it just it's just no getting around it. So it's just a it's just a terrible situation. You you know, Dolph loses his life, his 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 wife and his kids his wife loses a husband and a partner, his kids lose their father, Daddy O loses a business partner, Key Lock uses loses his older cousin, a mentor, and the city loses a fucking hero. Like right. a literal neighborhood hero over what I'm sure, I'm a hundred percent sure is some senseless just bullshit, some ego driven nonsense, man. Fuck that bitch ass nigga. He he might got more money than me, but he ain't really than me. I killed that nigga. And now Dolph is dead. And you about to go do 
nine thousand years in jail. Yeah, it's, it's just stupid. And then, um, you know, the black youngster situation. Black youngster is just like he's he's being a fucking weirdo. Like you being a weirdo, you being a clout chaser is distasteful. And at some point, you gotta stop being an entertainer and be a man. You sparked the situation in Vegas last year that people have swept under the rug. You went on IG Live and said, yeah, I'm in Vegas. Let's have a shootout, y'all bitch-ass niggas. Y'all pussy out here in Vegas. I kill all y'all niggas. And niggas came and had a shootout. And y'all wasn't prepared for the shootout. Women got shot. Somebody, I think somebody lost their life in the midst of all of this because you want to be an entertainer and a fucking clown. And it's corny. Yeah. The doll shit. You went on Vlad and said, me and Dolph squash our issue. We talk man to man, whatever, whatever. I ain't going to say nothing else about him. He don't say nothing about us. It's cool. Soon as he died, you back perform and shake something, and then you go shoot a, a video at a graveyard in front of his last name like you had something to do with the murder. Yeah, I, I saw like a little thread about that, and I, I try to stay out of all this goofy shit. His last name is Thornton. Yeah. And... I saw people making the, oh, when do y'all know this video was filmed? And then, you know, this, and it's just like, if it was, some things are just better left. Exactly. Not doing. If it was already filmed, why is it leaking now? Yeah, like, that's what I'm, no, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) Some things are just better left alone. Oh, shit, I did that video. Because it's, it's too coincidental because you're literally, you're in a graveyard. Why are you next to the mausoleum that says Thornton on it? Biggish. It just it's it's bizarre. You know what I'm saying? Shit. That's the yeah. shit that the the young niggas in Jacksonville and all that been getting into or whatever, and they're realizing that we're this is taking it too far, and it's fucking us up career wise. Like yeah. young and Ace just got grabbed by the feds. Hey, you, let me holler at you. <laughs> let me holler at you. What's going on with such 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 this 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 and this? You're put on notice. So now he can't move around. Uh, Fulio, he's he's like, yo, after this, after this next project, I ain't dissing no more day. I was dissing because it's fucking with your money. Right. Like all of that shit is we talked about it with Sean Cotton. It's a cheat code in order to get immediate attention. If I diss Dan tomorrow and then Dan diss me, it's gonna be the talk of the internet, at least in Philly. Nigga, could you imagine if we drop diss pods to each other? Oh, nigga. It's <laughs> oh gonna, my it's gonna God. Be, that, there goes our viral moment. Yeah. <laughs> like all five years of great content, and mm-hmm. it's just like reduced down to you. Oh, you know Matt, this Chad and Chad put out a podcast with Pastor Carl, and they this Matt. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like that shit would, would would hit the top of the podcast. The craziest right? part is not even joking. Niggas would get into that. Mm-hmm. They're not even joking. Niggas would dead ass be into that. Oh shit. no, I got something to say about that nigga. When you recording again? <laughs> I'll come help you out, this this bitch ass nigga. I, I've been I've been ain't fuck with that nigga. He wouldn't let me on the G. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> So it's like one of them things where it's just like, yo, the the We the, should do that. That would be fun. <laughs> we could make a million dollars. Fast. <laughs> Fast. So uh. it's like, yo, we in a situation where it's like, yo, niggas are realizing like that shit stops your money. Dirk just said it this year. I'm not dissing no more ops. You know why? Because he ain't fake successful no more. He real successful. Yeah. The nigga had 42 placements on Billboard. Yeah. You know what you can't, and he just had his first headline and show in Chicago in probably a decade at the United Center. You know what the fuck you can't do when you got beef with 900 niggas headline at the United Center right. or whatever fucking the Wells Fargo, whatever fucking large arena that exists that will allow rap. You can't headline when you got beef with 10,000 niggas. You can't do it. Look at what's his name? Uh, Ma'am, what's his name? I need some understanding, ma'am. Oh, uh, Quando Rondo. Quando Rondo. Remember, he was get, losing shows left and right. Yeah. Because, and he, realistically, he didn't even do the shit. Right. But you we in it. We saw it, and you still can't perform. But you we in it. We know you ain't the trigger man, and you still can't perform but, nowhere, because your man don't rap. Yeah. <laughs> but you in it. And it's just like, now this club appearance is like, oh, we can't have you here. Now this venue is like, oh, we, we can't, right. you know. And it's just so. Imagine if you were actual like he's a a, a little nigga in, as far as a comedy. No, no. This, go, game this goes back to the shit I was co- more so saying on the Patreon earlier this week. It's like at some point you have to realize, like, yo, all that negativity shit. It's nothing. Like if you're not waking up and going outside your house to be peaceful and productive, yeah. you got it fucked up. All it generates is attention. It doesn't make money. 
Beefing is bad for business. Every drug every dealer, business. every drug dealer, every gangster you talk to in Fuck the country. Drugs and drugs. <laughs> I'm talking about anything. It's bad for Anything. beefing is bad for business. If you a cashier at Save a Lot and fighting the other cashier, bitch, y'all can't work the same shift now. <laughs> like one of y'all might have to go. Exactly. Like it's just what it is. Beefing and stupid shit just gets you nowhere. It's bizarre that the rap shit still does it. Yeah, and it's like, yo, you take somebody as successful as Black Youngster, this is an opportunity for you, for Gotti, for everybody on that side to 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 look like like to look like real men about the situation just to be like, yo, you know, rest in peace, Dolph. We didn't see eye to eye when he was alive, but this is extreme circumstance. We got to stop the violence. This is an opportunity for you to be a leader. Mm -hmm. Niggas won't even niggas be having golden opportunities to look like more than what they are. and won't even take them like not trying to be funny. (laughs) Like y'all get mad at me. Y'all really don't like Jeezy no more. And I think that the nail in the coffin was, at the verses, yep. when Gucci went off the fucking rails, and Jeezy's just like, "Hey man, it is what it is. We bigger than this. Is hip hop? You know what I'm saying? It's it for Atlanta, it's for the city." And niggas is like, "He killed your fucking homie. How you did it? Did it? Did it? Did And Jeezy's just like, "I'm really rich as shit. Yeah. Like I'm not fake rich. I'm, I'm really wealthy. rich. I'm, I'm wealthy. I'm wealthy. <laughs> I'm important too, though. I'm first nigga from my hood with a Lamborghini. <laughs> nigga, that was 12 years right. ago. <laughs> like, Jeezy, like, I'm straight, yeah. straight out here. So he looking at it, like, if again, like the same way we look at it with sense. What is Jeezy supposed to do in that situation? Shoot Gucci with 1.9 million people watching the live right. feed? It just, and knowing he just got a million or two million dollars to do this shit, I'm supposed to kill Gucci on live stream and go to jail for 30 years so y'all can say I'm an idiot for throwing my life away. And why would you let him provoke you like that? You you smarter than that. You got you that that was crazy. Like you damned if you this internet, this whole internet generation is designed to put people in the trick bag. Mm-hmm. You damned if you do. You damned if you don't. If you don't respond, you a bitch ass nigga. If you do respond in an extreme measure, you an idiot because why would you take it that far? I've literally, I've had to like have the talks with like my close people, my therapists, all that shit and understanding what we're doing and being out there more and shit like that and understanding that these comments like, and I see a lot of- Don't read the comments. No, fuck, I'm talking about stupid tweets. I see all this stupid shit. You might not think I see your goofy ass. I see it. It gets sent to me. I see the shit. You realize it's like, yo- you're doing the job though. Kanye said it best. Everybody going to say something. I'd be worried if they said nothing. Yeah. So you go on the YouTube and leave a stupid comment. You did the job because you didn't hit the, we got the view, right? <laughs> I got the view already. Got the view already. You already watched for over 30 seconds. It took you, you 48 you, seconds to fucking register your comment. You, you, you pulled off what we needed you to pull off when it comes to the, to the, uh, to the tweeting about it, to the Instagram making a post about it's like you're branding it. You're yeah. you're marketing the shit without me having to do. It. You're you're doing the job. So you got to look at it from that aspect, where it's like, as long as they mention in it, you you Still hide one. You you hide yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, yeah. I'm not trying to be funny. It, yeah. You 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 the topic at the moment. You hot. The second they not, that's when it's a problem. Yeah, indifferent attention, whether it be good attention or bad attention, is good. Right. Indifference is where you don't want to be, especially no. when you're trying to fucking brand something or have a business or right. whatever. That's where you don't want to be because then you essentially are in purgatory. Like, listen, I say it all the time. If you watch Private Parts, what made Howard Stern pop was not his supporters. It was the people it was who... The detractors. It was his detractors, the people who hated him. And that scene always sticks with me when Pig Vomit was like, tell me about his numbers. He was like, the average radio listener listens for 30 minutes. His fans listen for an hour and 30 minutes. And he was like, why? And he was like, because they want to see what he's going to say next. And he was like, okay, well, what about the people who hate him? He was like, the average Stern hater listens for two hours and 30, 30 minutes, minutes every day. And he was like, if they hate him, why do they listen? He's like, because they want to see what he's going to say next. That's the reality of it. Yeah. Motherfuckers who don't like you will mention you more than people who do. Yeah. The they'll, shit is they'll bizarre. Study you. They your they'll, biggest, they're your biggest marketing team. They, they your biggest marketing motherfuckers. Yeah, well, it's while I'll so say, bizarre. let your haters be your marketing team. It's so bizarre, dog. Like, I see it all the time. People will literally make thesis on the shit they don't like mm-hmm. and will not do it for the things they do. Can't even explain. Can't, can't give you two even, sentences on dog, the shit that they fuck with. Dog, it's bizarre. So it's like you sit back and you just like, dog, it's no room for me to get involved yeah. with shit, to be in a negative place. or uh, Like, think about the things we talking about doing, the things we got going on. 
why the fuck would I be in a negative ill spot or want to be in that? Why would I even take the energy away from my productive ass life to be in a negative spot or in a negative space or worried about some dumb back and forth negative shit? That shit shows where motherfuckers really be at, and I can't harp on that shit enough. It's like, you would think in a city with all these murders, with all this crime, with all this nonsense, you would think that when something comes along like this, when something comes along like Pastor Carl, when something comes along like Dope, sh- dope Show, Shout Out Mirror stuff, when something comes along like these things, everyone would just clamor to it and just be like, yo, no, we're going to... This is good because this. Yeah. Think about if they become a rolling loud level of concert, yeah. nigga. Think about the employment situations yeah. that you could do in your city if you able to get to that point. Think about what Pastor Carl will be able to do with the right backing. He's on mayoral committees. Yeah. Think about the change he really can affect. But all my fuckers can see is just like when they didn't like him from eight years ago over right. some stupid. It, it's right. stupid the way motherfuckers act. It's just nonsense, dog. And honestly, it gets me... I know you don't be feeling like this, but it gets me at times where it's just like... You just have to completely disconnect. Yeah. That's why I look at a situation like Young Dolph and be like, he just shouldn't have been out there getting them cookies. Right. Or I look at a situation like Nip, like he didn't have to be in that fucking... In that plaza on plaza that Sunday every morning. fucking day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at Jay. I'm an Ibiza. Yes. Marcy Projects. Nigga, I'm in a visa. <laughs> like, Jay ain't going to them project hallways. Jay been living Jay been living in LA for like the better part of like eight or nine years now. Like, we barely know where Jay live at. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And we know where everybody in LA lives at. You know what I'm oh. saying? Like, it was like one little thing that came out when they first bought oh. the crib. You ain't heard nothing since. When Kanye come to Chicago, you know where he go? Wrigley Field. Right. <laughs> I go in past this jump. Like it's no, it, it's no point when you really on some shit because it's like you'll get into these situations and it's just like, dog, like, wh- like what? 50 Cent used to say it all the time. I got security because, not because of what I'm afraid that y'all going to do to me. I'm afraid of what I'm going to do to y'all. Like, I'm protecting my investment in every s- scenario. NBA Youngboy got a zillion security guards at his crib right now in Utah to protect him from what he might fucking go outside and do and further fuck up his situation and fuck his money up. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yo, you got to remove, you got to take extreme circumstances sometimes to remove yourself like, I don't want from no, certain I don't, shit. I don't, I don't want no dumb shit to pop off with anybody I know. Like, right. I, I, you know, I, don't, I don't want that. But at the same time, I also want to protect myself from getting into some dumb shit. Yeah. So I don't go to certain things. I don't be in certain, just because it's like, y'all don't know how to go out and just have a good ass time. Absolutely not. I don't know why, though. Chick the other day was literally saying how she was like, yeah, you know, I'm going out tonight. It's my birthday. You know, I'm normally pregnant on my birthday, but I'm turning up tonight. It's just a bus conversation. <laughs> and, 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 and she like, but I'm turning up tonight. We going out, me and my girls, da da da. And I wish a bitch would try to try to rain on my parade tonight because it's my birthday. And I'm like, oh, how God. is that in your brain? It's your birthday. You're going out. You're not pregnant. You're not pregnant. <laughs> Turn up time. You drink. Yeah. You probably do drink. Probably drink yeah, anyway. Probably get it on with you. <laughs> but it's it's turn up time for your birthday. But still in your mind, a I bitch better man. not bitch try better, I'm man. Not, like whooping. Uh, what they say? Stomp a nigga ass out until they cut the lights on. Yeah. Stop a bone out your ass. <laughs> and some brand new chuckers. Like that, that. It's just. Did you? See, I saw a video the other day. I didn't even want to see it, but it got sent to me. There was. Two, two chicks arguing over a nigga at a gas station. Oh, yeah, girl got the clappers. She got the clappers. Went and got the clappers. I saw John the other day. Two niggas in a, in a supermarket parking lot. They arguing, whatever, whatever. Nigga say, you know what, you bitch ass nigga, I'll be right back. Bull stood right there, him and his girl. She, she no, no, come on. He's like, no. I'm just... Nigga walked up. He went to go draw his shit. Dude shot the shit out of him. Waited for him to come back. Stood his ground. Shot the shit out of him. Murdered his ass in cold blood in the supermarket parking lot. Over, I'm sure, it was nothing. And he wasn't the aggressor. It's now, not funny. Now you, a, now you a fucking pack, and you got and somebody got to explain to your family why you got smoked outside of the Piggly Wiggly. Like, <laughs> this is stupid. I knew that was coming. I been prepared for that. <laughs> like, I knew you was going to say a market that ain't the fuck. <laughs> you outside the Piggly Wiggly, and now they got to fucking come scrape your fucking brains up off the ground because you had too much old English. At motherfucking three in the afternoon. You know how I'd be like exiting 1.6 miles? <laughs> I see 
seen it coming. Seen it coming. Couldn't prepare for it. But it's just like, yo. Piggly wiggly. <laughs> You have to make the assumption that everybody. Can you imagine that? You go to the motherfucking supermarket. You go to get your eggs and your, your milk. You get into a fucking dick measure contest with the rock nigga. Yep. Now your girl phone ringing. Yeah, this is the uh, manager here at the Giant. Uh, <laughs> you might need to head on over to Miss Portia. Yeah, we might need you to identify the yeah. body. Imagine that. You have to go outside. Number one, and oh. be a regular human being. That's for I know that's hard. Yeah, be a regular human being, a kind, <laughs> decent just, human being. To just be normal. I know that's hard <laughs> as fuck for y'all. We in Philadelphia. I know it's hard. Go out. Hey, thank you. Please. Hey, you mind if? Oh, my bad, brother. Excuse me. Like things like like manners, mm. shit that your parents should have taught you. Things that me and Matt's parents and Dan's uh, beautiful mother told him. I, manners. I, real quick, other night on the bus, four young boys get on the bus. I already know they about to be goofy. You no, know, it's about to be nonsense time. Because they, they black. They get on <laughs> the bus. They black. <laughs> I just know where they That was going. enough. That was, <laughs> that was, that was, that was <laughs> you know what? You know what gave it away? They was black. I know where this is going. <laughs> young boys get on. They basically created like a shield. Like the first three for the fourth one to go past, because I guess he ain't had no bread or whatever. And I'm looking at him like, y'all know I can see y'all, right? Like yeah. I can see y'all. So I tell the young boy, I'm like, yo, come back up here real quick, yo. He come up. I'm like, why, yo? And he was like, what you mean? I'm like, why? Like why? Like why? Like why not just be like, oh head, I ain't got it. Like yeah. why? Like I'm not that boy. And he was like, you right, oh head, I ain't got it. I'm like, it's cool, go ahead. He goes sit down. They go sit down. We get the Grace Ferry, they ring the bell, they get off the bus. First one walk off, second walk off, third one walk off. The fourth young boy who didn't have it, he gets off last. He turns around and pulls the ski mask down, like from the scully. <laughs> and just stands. I just close the door. I'm like, these little niggas is ridiculous. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, just outside or anything. You know what I'm saying? My goodness. And it's like you run into the wrong motherfucker who not yeah, having it. That was my bigger point. Like, yo, you yo. gotta assume that people, whatever, whoever you run into is on what you on. Yeah. Because if they on what you on, then they could go either way. Right. People go out. We talked about it before. We talked about it a hundred times on this show. People go outside on barbarian time, thinking that they just gonna fucking run through whoever they come into contact with. And it's like, nah, it don't always work like that. Like sometimes you gonna get you, you gonna go out here looking for your issue, and you gonna get ten. Fucking magazines right. of of your motherfucking issue, and you not gonna be prepared for that shit. And it's just like, why, why? Because yeah. you had a bad day. Your baby mom pissed you off. Yeah. You got fired for stealing boxes. Whatever the fuck it was, man. You outside, man. I, man, I wishing. Oh man, a, a nigga running to me today, man. I'm blowing a nigga head off, and then you get your head blown off. It's just stupid. Man. It's dumb. It's just sad. It's super dumb. Man. And the saddest part about shit is. It be people who be getting money. Yeah. Like, how the fuck do you want money and problems? That shit shouldn't even go hand in hand. Like, if you getting money, that shit shouldn't even be on your radar. Like, I'm get- it never was like that. Like, Say it again? The person that got money got money. The hitter, he just kept his ass in the house until it was time to hit. Look at, like you just said, Dirk. I'm not beefing with nobody. Nobody. I'm number one on Billboard. I just made more money than I ever made in my life. I don't want no smoke. Y'all got it. Y'all win. Y'all done killed my brother. Y'all killed Vaughn. Like, I don't want no smoke, man. Y'all win. I'm waving a white flag. At some point, it just has to become, like, life just has to become more serious to you. Yes. It just has, it has to be about more. Even all of this stupid shit, like, we again, if you're not on the Patreon, go get your ass on the Patreon. We just right. had a very good episode where we broke down all these different things. We talked about the uh, survivor's guilt. We talked about the abundance uh, mindset. The abundance mindset as opposed to the scar- scarcity mindset. It's like, yo, at a certain point, it really is evident to where these people aren't happy. Right. These people who run around with four watches on and ninety <laughs> chains and. They're not happy with this shit because there's no, you give me a $130,000 watch. Ain't nothing to be mad about. I'm pretty happy. (laughs) Ain't nothing to be mad about. There's nothing to to beef and shoot out and argue and fight. And and it it just doesn't make any sense. All the little rappers out there, let me explain something to you. You want to mold yourself in the, in the, you want to create your, your image and all that in the mold of who's the most successful. 
out of all the young niggas out here that's the most successful, you know who just had a fucking a sold out tour, fifteen million dollars, little baby. You know who fucking everybody, little baby. You know who making more money than everybody, little baby. You know who ain't in beef with nobody, little baby. Oh. And if you is, we'll never know it because it's so decoded yeah. in his raps that he he'll never give a nigga that type of attention. Like, you know who handling his business and everybody around him successful, little baby. Yeah. Like, you know who barely got a label but got the hottest label out, little baby. Like. Look at him, like, look, like mold yourself the more, in the eyes of, of somebody that's actually successful and not the, faking success. The boy, um, uh, what the fuck is his name? Um, the funny boy, big boy. Uh, Drewski. Drewski. He did you see the joke? Um, how niggas be when when four pf come around? Yeah, that, <laughs> that was funny as shit. Nigga bum, bombarded his way into the club and shit. That's a funny ass nigga. But yeah, man, it just Juicy just had a, a clubhouse room the other night with Crip Mac. Oh shit, that's yeah. funny as shit. Yeah, apparently Crip Mac is uh, Samoan and Belizean, which under uh, which explains why he's so large. Okay, all right, Samoan yeah. and Belizean. Samoan and Belizean. The um, yeah, that would have probably been funny as shit. <laughs> the um, but yeah, no, nah, it's just you, you, you sit back and you just like. How you getting all this fucking money and want to beef and go to jail and st- it just doesn't make it. That's therapy. Mm-hmm. That's honestly mi- niggas need therapy. Listen, to me. I'm telling you, I did therapy. My life flipped the fuck around. Do the shit. Yeah. You don't even be realizing the shit you're holding on to at times, yo. Go to therapy. Men, women, every send the dogs to therapy. <laughs> Everybody right. needs to go, yo. Real shit. Because there's to me there's an issue when I look at rap music because we like rap music. Mm-hmm. There's an issue to me where I look at rappers beefing to sell records and then ultimately people dying and going to jail and getting shot and get this shit has been going on since the beginning of time. Yes. The beginning of time. 50 Cent and Ja, it seemed all fun and games. 50 really got stabbed up in the dark. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 50 really got hit a bunch of times behind some music shit. Saying too much <laughs> on rap records and shit like that. Pac going out the way he went out. Then Biggie going. It's too much of this shit. Yeah. Then you look at like Jay Z and Nas. They like, all right, listen. Jay like, yo, I'm with Budweiser, so <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, Nasir. <laughs> you want to get some of this crypto money or not, nigga? <laughs> Nas like, all right, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Look at at uh, remember Snoop Dogg and Puff went on the Steve Harvey show right mm-hmm. after Biggie got killed. Like, all right, yeah, nah, this shit we draw. Snoop said on uh, Snoop's upside your head. I don't care about this East and West shit. I'm just trying to get my money, man. I stay flying dry. I don't get caught up in the rain. Like th- th- I'm fuck this shit. This is too much. Like we we the fuck tweaking tweaking out here. And you look at it, it's just it's gotten to the point now where the rap has become too real. Yes, it's too real. Like even them niggas back in the day, like they wasn't doing shit like rap that. got so real that the fucking. Podcasters started fucking living their raps out, and they not even rappers. Look at Tag Stone. Yeah. Tag Stone fucking got in, was so incensed by the fuck shit that Trey Ave was doing that he was like, "Yo, when I see this nigga, I'm duffing him out," and it turned into a whole shootout. People died. A girl got her fucking nose shot off. Like y'all just did the absolute fucking most over nothing, nothing. when you really boil it down, like over nothing. Banga is dead. Fucking girl got her fucking nose shot off. Somebody else got fucking shot. Like, taxes in jail. Trey Ave potentially going to get reindicted. Like, it's just a mess of a situation over ego and words. Mm-hmm. And just niggas I, just being unscrupulous. But I look at other genres. Like, perfect example, when Nori said that whole shit about the $7 getting killed and left rag. But it's like I watch people lose millions of dollars in a... Yeah, they situation. go to fucking go on vacation they, together. You, you look at these <laughs> other genres of music... Keith Urban don't beef with Garth Brooks. Right. This shit don't ever happen. Michael, Meet me at high noon, Garth Brooks. Michael Jackson <laughs> bought the Beatles catalog from them at an auction. They like, all right, we don't fuck with Mike no more. But they didn't go kill him right. or get somebody to hit his. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I know where Jermaine stay at. <laughs> like, <laughs> did nobody go that route? No, you know, my man part of this really guard. He off this week. He don't fly over. Kill, your, kill Tito and fly back. Oh, because Tito's still living in Gary. <laughs> I, know, I know where Tito at. Tito's still in Gary. We can get to Tito. Like, no, nobody went that route. It's like, it just, you would think after a while, after all that has transpired, 
All the rappers dying, all the rappers going to jail forever, all the rappers on death row getting out, going back and forth. Fuck, what, 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 what Crip Max say? Uh, back and fifth, back and fifth, fifth, back and fifth. Back before, before they was fifth, five minutes, you know what I'm like? <laughs> you would just think that it's like, yo, let's just take the high road. Let's just make some decent money. And let's just but you chill. know what it is, niggas' egos be too be overly activated, and nobody wants to look like a bitch. Right, like nobody wants to look like a bitch. Well, I'm t- I'm here to tell you now, uh, I don't mind looking like a bitch for the greater good, and for me to fuck to get home to be able to drive these Rolls Royces and uh, go to the Maldives and Phuket and all that cool shit. I'm gonna be alive. Like Brian, Brian, <laughs> Brian shout out Brian. Brian hit us today on the email. Say yo, the car is going into production tomorrow. Well, Monday. Yeah. If I'm a bitch, cool. Cool. Holla at me when you get your shit <laughs> custom. <Right. laughs> like, that's all. Like, I, I don't. I don't. Fuck you that. can't cash in no real nigga credit, yo. It does not pay off. I promise you. I know plenty of real niggas. I know niggas did f- fucking serve twenty something years for so they roll and five homicides, all kinds of like stone cold killers. They came home to nothing. They had to figure it the fuck out. Nobody didn't give these niggas nothing, man. Like it's it's no payoff for all this street shit. You, it's no victory. You don't win. Jay Z is the fucking anomaly. Fifty Cent is a fucking anomaly. They tried to kill Fifty ten times for, for him to turn around and be the, become the Black Dick Wolf later on in life. But he had to go through some shit. But the reality is, like Fifty and Jay, it's it, that's the perfect word. Anomalies. They anomalies. They're lightning rods. Yeah. From that shit, because the reality of it is, is this shit's gonna catch up. All, 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 all that negativity you spew, it'll come back. Yep. It just is what it is. It always does. You live your life a certain way, you're going to get certain results. That's just life. It's just the way it rolls. I don't know. People don't believe in that shit. I don't, I don't care about the eighth moon and the Aries house and all <laughs> that crazy ass shit. I'm just talking about just genuine karma. Right. You be nice to people, nice shit happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Today, I was driving to 49, and motherfucker, but his car broke down. You know what I'm saying? I pulled up. He was, like, kind of in the road. I jumped off the bus, came, helped him push it off to the side and shit, like, yeah. to where he was, like, out the way. Got on a lady. He was like, that was very nice of you. I'm like, I mean, he just, the fuck, he just going to be, he's in, he, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, and people just going, people going up on the curb, <laughs> right. bro, and it's just like, Help him, dude. why are we like this? Like, other than last night, I come And out. then this is the weirdest part, not to cut go you ahead, off. Go ahead. Most motherfuckers would have jumped off the bus. Well, not the bus because they most of them ain't working there. Yeah. But most of us would have came, they'd have set their phone up, <laughs> and then pushed him right. out. The, and it's just right. you, you just go and just do nice shit for people. And you know, it's just I don't know. I'm coming out of Marv crib last night. I come out of Marv crib or whatever. I see a uh, lady. She got her uh, she, like his next door neighbor. Apparently, she got her hood popped on her car or whatever like that. She's sitting there. I get in my car, then I really look and realize like what's going on. I'm like, damn, that's like a newer car. Like, why the fuck our car? Like, whatever. So I go to her. I say, hey, I was like, you having problems with your car? Like, your car not starting? You need to jump. She like, yeah, it's something. I don't know what's going on. So I'm I like, I would have walked over there, but with my gun. That's how they do. It. That's how they do in the movies. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so, so I'm talking to her. She's like, yeah, no, I don't know what's going on, blah blah. I'm like, oh well, you know, she's like, it's a 21. It shouldn't be. Da da da. I'm like. Well, yeah, you might just have an issue with the battery. It might have just got too cold, whatever, whatever. I got a jump box. So I get the jump box or whatever. I hook the joint up. I tell her again. She's like, I don't got to wait. I'm like, nah, this joint, this this work work. Like, this, this, the shit you got might work. My shit work. So she get in the car, cut the car on, disconnect the joint. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, you good. She, I, was, I was like, listen, I was like, this shit test. I was like, you take a, I was like, when you drive the car wherever you're going, Get there, cut it off, cut it right back on. If it turn back over, you cool. If it don't, then you got a bigger fucking problem here. You probably need a battery, whatever, whatever. She's like, oh, that was so nice of you, blah, blah, blah. You look familiar. I think I know. You don't know me, lady. But <laughs> that's, a whole other, that's a whole other fucking story. But no, I'm just happy to help. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to try to use me jumping your car to parlay your way into some dick. That's not happening. How she look? She wasn't really, wasn't really giving that. Oh, because no, that's <laughs> normally what have niggas going to help. Yeah, hey, you know, you know, I got a little hope. Let me yeah, I just wanted to help. I got my dolly. Let me slide under the <laughs> <laughs> nigga. Pull out a dolly. I got my industrial <laughs> jack. This joint can jack up the bus. You know what I'm saying? This joint, this joint was strong. This the hydraulic joint. Niggas start fixing all kinds of shit. Yeah. yeah, so I just wanted to help the lady. She drove off. I went about my motherfucking business. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it's just simple little shit like that where it's just like. It's cold as fuck. It's 20 something degrees outside. You got a woman out here by herself trying to fucking figure out why her car not starting. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me let me help. Let me lend my expertise to this. Like yeah. it, it it didn't didn't add no time to my commute, no nothing. I just wanted to be a good Samaritan and help out and everybody wins. 
Mm-hmm. It'd be like that. But yeah, man, try to stay uh, regular. Like you ever think it was regular? Point. Just try to stay normal and regular. Real regular. Speak. It's funny. We just kind of like broached the topic at the very end, right there. Yeah. About uh, I forgot. <laughs> what did we just say? We talked about helping people, and uh, yeah, I forgot. Damn. All right. It was good. <laughs> it was, it was, just know it was good. It was, when I was, when I, whatever it was. What I was coming with was good. It was coming probably, with some heat. Yeah. <laughs> it might come back. It's coming with some fucking heat. Who knows? So, till Matt figures that out, I'll let him just jump back in whenever he figures it out. I don't want him to lose it again. Right now, there is a whole social media movement online about defund these male driven podcasts. Right. It's a whole thing. Like, I see it on Instagram, I see it on Twitter. Constantly, even coming from men now, the men are like, yo, and they're talking about a very specific kind of podcast. Mm -hmm. They're talking about these male driven podcasts where the content is essentially either them dunking on women, rating women just to turn around and tell them, bitch, you bugging, um, or these dating shows where it's three or four guys against three or four girls and they're arguing about nothing. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the argument, you're no further along than you were when you started the fucking argument. We did a dating episode like that, like a hundred and some episodes ago. It was and terrible. It was it was funny because Kev, rest in peace, Kev was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Oh Dev- no, I was thinking about the other episode when uh, Nikki and somebody else had came. It was pretty terrible because they wouldn't talk. Okay, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, we one. did the other show. The dating show was hilarious. It was funny, it was but funny. The, you said it. We got nowhere. We got nowhere. We, we got to the end of it. And People it just... come into those type of scenarios with preconceived notions and beliefs, and very rarely do you enlighten a person to the point where they feel differently than they did when they walked in the room. Right. It's just banter. Yeah, I mean, the reality of it is, is the the setup for these shows is normally three prostitutes and three <laughs> drug dealers. <laughs> And no one respects anyone, so it's just like this. Nothing nigga, is gonna. Nigga, you wasn't saying that when you was trying to pay me five hundred. The fuck, like we get nowhere. No. We get nowhere. So in particular, Fresh and Fit, which I've talked about on this show before, um, but you know they exist in the black manosphere on YouTube, which is a very specially. They're, they're, they're just in the manosphere period because most of their audience is white. It's not just because they have like uh. Uh-huh. Uh, Roly Masamilo and all of them type of people on there, like the more mainstream Manosphere guys or whatever. And the Manosphere is like a new phenomenon, especially like with this this video driven content and live streams and all that on YouTube, which is basically to combat the misandry that a lot of more feminist driven ideologies have been spewed around in the last five or six years. Um, you know, on the internet at large, specifically Twitter and YouTube. Right. So the manosphere serves to balance out some of the misandry, which is the hating of men and men driven hate content uh, that has been out there in the atmosphere that has pretty much gone unchecked as society recorrects itself from when men could just pull their dick out in public and nobody would say anything. Right. So it's like in recorrecting, we've sort of overcorrected to the point where we've swung from misogyny to misandry. And what we were supposed to do was establish some sort of middle ground, which we just completely missed Mm -hmm. altogether. So fresh and fit exists within the greater manosphere, which is essentially content that's supposed to be aimed at helping, helping men improve themselves, be better men, be better fathers, be better leaders, et cetera. But that content from them gets no traction. No. None whatsoever. You know what content from them gets traction? Myron kicking bitches out the studio. Kicking strippers and OnlyFans girls out the studio. Kicking Asian doll out the studio. Shit like that. And they have had a lot of problems that kind of like bubbled and existed just within the YouTube realm. But because they had a mainstream, I wouldn't call her a star. Whatever she is. Is Asian doll a star? Which one is it? That's the Vaughn's ex girl. I don't, I don't I I can't. All right, she's 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 a mainstream performer. N A. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's let's know. call her a performer. Let's refer to her. Which she, she's a rap artist. She's a performer. I realized today. Now, I, but I she has a following. I don't know who half of these people are. I hate that I know who all of them are. Like some <laughs> having a day with the Ari Lennox. 
And I was just like, I really, I see the name, and I, yeah. but I don't. Ari Lennox, for somebody that's supposed to have like a non problematic, like a uh, public, uh, like persona, she sure gets into a lot of mess. I, I, to me, it just amazes me at times that people care this much about what these people do and say. Yeah. But I, I saw like, there was a study that came out. University did a study. Uh, people that are obsessed with celebrity um, tend to be less intelligent. I'm like, yeah, we've been telling all and this. And that's not even a, they don't need a study. <laughs> yeah, we've been telling all this for years. Like, like, you you are stupid. Yeah. You are, there's something wrong with you. Like, I I personally am just, so I, with Asian Doll, I, yeah, so, I don't know. I can't tell you, I don't know. She has music that people seem to yes. like. I, I know I don't. She has music, she has a music career that has traction to it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how you know successful she is or isn't. She's not like you're not going to the Asian Doll tour. That ain't happening. It's not Nicki Minaj. It's not Nicki Minaj. So it's not Cardi B. It's not even Mulatto. Mulatto's a platinum artist. Like it's not even that. But she she exists. So she's a she's a performer in the mainstream. But she has a following. She has a following of dodo birds that all like support her. That are like, how dare you? So. The how dare you came down when there was a back and forth between Myron Gaines, which that's not that's a performance name that is not his real name. Okay. His real name is like some Sudanese Middle Eastern okay. shit. It's not his real name, but that's his mainstream name. Uh, and Myron and Fresh, the host of Fresh and Fit, are guys that you can tell didn't get no pussy before they were Fresh and Fit. Okay. It oozes out of their content, the way they engage with women, the way they talk to women, because in any other setting, and we were just in a house party and it was 15 guys and 30 girls or whatever, and a nigga like Myron came in and was like, no, what you got to understand is, yo, bitches, and then, you're fucking up the pussy for everybody. Mm -hmm. You got to go. <laughs> so to do it with, you know, with a camera in your face day after day after day is just like, Oh, you don't get it. <laughs> like you're, you're in the short term, you're creating content that's engaging because other men like you are out there like, yeah, get that bitch, humble her, teach her a lesson. Don't let her talk to you like that. Fuck these bitches. But in reality, in the long term, it's like, bro, you're fucking it up for everybody. Yeah. <sighs> Especially yourself. The In theory, the, the sentiment of these podcasts is right. Right. It's right. Right? Correct. I agree. Right. I watch, I consume a lot of this shit just to be like, all right, he not tripping, but the common denominator is that the delivery is wrong 100% of the time. The reality of it is, even with us, we sit up here and we'll give our opinions. Right. We'll give our stories. We'll give our trials and tribulations. We'll give our beliefs. Yeah, we'll give first-hand experiences, all that shit. All that shit. If you're going to have us, like, if this tomorrow we decide that we're going to be the podcast based around sex or dating or relationships, you have to have viable people from the other side with you. Correct. If you're not going to do that, if you it, like, I see a lot of podcasts that it, it basically becomes like locker room talk. Yes. You can't really do that and expect the following to roll with you. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of the day, bitches are, are nuts. Yes. So that is a fact. And like we spoke about in the earlier, John, people who hate you pay more attention than the people who don't like you, than the people who do like you. So I feel like, yeah, I see some podcasts and I'm just like, Perfect example. I got asked about the podcast I'm going on tomorrow. What is your, what's your, your, your basis? Like yeah. what's your, what's the foundation of this? What are you right. trying to do? Like, are you trying to be black 60 minutes? Or are you trying to be black CNN? Yeah. Are you trying to be, you know, the next Keenan and Kel? Or are you trying to be, what's the niggas from New York? Um, they used to be ridiculous. Um, that's on Showtime. Yeah. Jesus and Mero? No, not Jesus and Mero. They were actually chill. Um, Buck. Um, oh, Star and Buck. Star Wild. and Buck Wild. <laughs> like, are you trying to do that? Are you, like, you have Star to. Star was getting death threats. <laughs> yeah, like, you have to, like, pick what you want to do. And I think me and you just both be, it's like, yo, we want to be the, the cool, hip, social commentary people. Right. 
And it's like, yeah, we do it well. We social commentary on everything day to day. So it's like, yeah, this shit becomes kind of effortless. Now, if you want to be the podcast that sits up here and goes hard at women for the next hour and a half, it's like, yo, you kind of got to be ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Because the backlash is coming. But this is the reality of it. That shit gets more attention than the other shit. Exactly. We talked about it on Patreon where it's like, again, shout out Brasco. The chick was like, why it ain't no black male podcast that's out here teaching wealth building and credit improvement and how to be a better man and a better person and this and this and black I mean uh Brasco was like they are y'all just don't make them go yeah, y'all ain't paying attention <laughs> like that's just the reality yeah. of it and I said it on Patreon I'm like we bring six strippers in this motherfucking room <laughs> and just start drinking Hennessy and spitting it on him yep. we'd be it should be viral me Matt right. and Crip Mac and six strippers is, is up it's up we going viral <laughs> it's going viral viral yeah on her. Like, that's just what Yo, it is. strippers now. Yo. <laughs> but no, that's 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 real. And I'm like, when I saw that on, on Twitter, it's just like, can we stop these all-male podcasts? Like, it's getting ridiculous, bro. Go pick up a wrench. Go pick up a this. And it's just Learn like, how to build a house. Yeah, it's like, no, you build a house. Right. Because that, at the end of the day, at the root of that, that argument is flawed because... It's essentially your virtue signaling because you probably don't know how to build the house your goddamn self. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Number two, the potential growth when done right of intellectual property versus actual property is like a hundredfold. It's, it's not, not even, even close. close. Yeah. It's not even fucking close. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you can build a content library versus build a fucking house, you can monetize that content library forever. That house is worth what the fuck is worth. I literally had a conversation <laughs> with somebody at my job. I'm like, I'm trying to explain to him how money now that we're in media and you see how the money actually works, you can make a lot of money, a great deal of money Mm -hmm. from the, the same piece of intellectual property on different mediums. That is insane. Like we literally have made money from Podbean advertising, YouTube sponsors on the episode. Like it's insane when you really, really get into it. Like, you can really make nine streams of revenue off the same, same piece, piece of, of content. content. Yeah, look at what the fuck Nori and EFN are doing right now with Drink Champs. You know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers got a first look audio deal. They got a first look video deal. They got a television deal. They got a second look audio deal. They, it's just like, wait, what? This is all off of the same content. The same shit. They come record one time and make money nine times off the shit. Yeah, like, yeah. so it's like, yeah, so it's like the, the whole issue is is not get out of podcasts, and that's not the issue. It's a content issue. It's a it's a it's a, a, a expertise issue. It's a structure issue. It's a delivery issue in the case of fresh and fit. Where fresh and fit is flawed is that you bring five, six, eight, they've had 14 girls on the show before. And it's like, bro. Just because y'all have 16 mics doesn't mean you should have 14 girls on the show. Like, this is not going to be a good product. No. But visually, to the user, if I'm live streaming and I jump on your live stream and you got 14 girls in the studio, I'm going to sit and watch until some bullshit happens. Mm-hmm. It's inevitable. You got 14 right. girls here that don't know each other. Right. Eventually, these bitches are going to say something to you or each other or whatever. Somebody going to pull a gun out like the girl did on yeah. academics. Like, this is, some, a, this is a train wreck. This is a bad girls club audition. <laughs> right. this is, yeah. I'm here for the train wreck. Right. And that's what people don't understand. So it's like, yeah, when you see these crazy numbers and this growth and all of that, people are tuning in to watch the train wreck. The content that they do with Grant Cardone and Robert Kiyosaki and all of that shit, that shit gets 13,000 views, shit like that. Like regular, degular shit. Nobody's interacting with that because that's not what your audience is here for. We went through it here. Omar Tate is one of our best interviews ever. Bar none. Bar none. The AO interview has more listens. Right. It's like, fuck that guy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, it, it just, it is what it is, man. It's like people, like, it's funny bringing the show full circle. People, yo, I thrive <laughs> off of negativity. <laughs> like, that's it. That's yeah. the way it works. So there are podcasts out here that are informative, that are, are helpful, that are a resource, that are really, really dropping gems and making you think outside the box and go to the next layer while entertaining you and making yeah. you laugh and not making you feel like a complete dickhead and all it's just all of that but y'all would rather watch non strippers mm-hmm. complain and argue about how this nigga this rapper didn't lead a right tip right that's just the reality the girl blue jasmine 
started on uh, Ain't at the Table mm-hmm. and then went on a whole podcast tour spreading her message of a nigga got to take care of me even when we break up. Like that, it was a thing. Mm-hmm. Like she went from Adam to Kevin Samuels to like, she went on every podcast imaginable off of a flawed theory of what she is or ain't going to do in the event of a breakup. Bitch, I'm calling the constable. Yeah. You are getting the fuck out whether you want to get out or not. This shit <laughs> in my name. I'm calling the sheriff and the constable. Hey, you getting out. Sheriff's here. <laughs> you can talk all that. They, gonna have to, they will drag yeah, you out. Yeah. They going to have to drag me out. They will. Don't worry. Yeah. Sheriff named LW. He going to get <laughs> your ass out of there. Like, dog. But yeah, man, I, I sit sometimes and it's like, you, it's it's funny because the other day Rob was saying how he was talking about the, I told you the whole poker shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I go through the same shit with the podcast shit now. And I was like, dog, I read an article that said on average, on average, there are 2,000 to 4,000 podcasts hitting the Apple directory. Every day. A day. A day. A day. Thousands of podcasts are starting a day. And you know how many podcasts make money? 10%. Less than that. Less than 10%. That just said five. Yeah, make money. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it was probably 10% when it wasn't as many shows being yeah. onboarded. So now it's down to 5%. So I personally think it's a blessing to be in a position. Absolutely. Of, like, it, it, it's wild. But, like, yo, when you really, really look at it, like, it's funny because he even he was saying, like, I know a girl was like, yeah, I'm starting a podcast. She's like, oh, he's like, okay. Literally look back six, seven months later, it's two episodes. Yeah, two episodes. It's like it's a lot of that. Like, I know tons of motherfuckers, it's just like, oh, yeah, we got a podcast. We'll be like, oh, when y'all drop? Uh, I mean, we might do a John. What's it? January? <laughs> we might get a John out to you in March. A- April. Yeah, you know what I'm <laughs> what, what's tax day? April 15th? Yeah. yeah, somewhere around there. Like, that's just the reality of it. Like we said before, you can't monetize shit that ain't consistent. It's just not going to work. But I will say, don't hesitate to start the podcast. Right. Don't not jump out there because these stupid motherfuckers is like, oh, no, don't do this and do this and whoop de whoop, holla holla. And the reality of it is you can do any fucking thing you want to do. I told Kev that shit the other day. Man, fuck talking about do the shit. Yeah. You can do the shit. You have an interesting perspective. No one else has that. It's you and Big Al. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> Y'all the only cool lawyers in the city. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's like you got a perspective. Go do the shit. But the reality of it is, is again, like Ra, I, I know I can't be as dedicated as y'all. Right. So don't do it unless word to Biggie Smalls, nigga. Only do it if your heart's in it. Yeah. That's just real. If your heart not in it, stop looking at ways to be in the mix of other shit that's going on. I see that a lot. And I think that's a bigger issue with this podcast and shit than it is with people with their content or their guest selection or this, that, and the third. It's people just doing it to do it. Yeah. That's the reality of it. Like, if your heart not in it, don't do it. That's with anything. Yeah, a lot of people aren't as interested as they think they are. Ben Simmons is out there on the court solely because he's 6'11". Yeah. If he was 6'1", he would not <laughs> he be a would basketball, not be playing player. basketball His heart not in it. That nigga would be a sheep herder or something. Seriously. Shit. You look at rappers and entertainers, actors, like niggas that go through the... Look, look, look at Jonah Hill. His heart is in it. When you see him gain 100 pounds to play War Dogs, yeah. then lose 100 pounds to play... That nigga's heart is in it. Yeah. He wants to be an actor. He wants... He earned that motherfucking Academy Award. Like... You, you, your heart in it, you, it's going to be able... We're going to see it. Yeah. Lil Wayne's heart was really in that music shit. We saw it. Yeah. The nigga did not go to sleep for six years. Right. Like, Lil Wayne didn't go to sleep till he went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> like, real talk. Best sleep I ever got. Bro. So it's like, if your heart not in it, it's going to show. How many motherfuckers you with the hookah shit probably came to you like, oh, I want to sell hookahs. And it's just, it's what it is. Motherfuckers see you successful at something. Oh shit! I'm let me get in. There. Yeah, because the average person, all they see is the end result. That's it. They don't see the hard work. They don't see fucking five years of TRP, three and a half. We didn't make no money. <laughs> Big Dan on the turnpike two in the morning and shit like that. They don't know this. Yeah, shit. they don't understand the grind. Like, I hit a, lot of, a lot of a lot of people. Uh, I'm gonna start mobile hooper, mobile hooker. Maybe like you said, maybe five percent of the people I sold this stuff to still in business. Yeah, yeah, real shit. That's because motherfuckers is just looking for the next wave, the next thing. Yeah. Remember internet radio 10 years ago? Yep. Remember that shit was like shit. the wave? Remember when everybody was selling hair? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Shit, party promoting. Everybody jumped into that. 
It was fish fries and home downs yep. and good sh- hoot nannies. Right before COVID went. shut all this shit down, as of like in the 2019, in the 2020, it was like eight promoters left. <laughs> like yeah. all of other niggas went and got jobs. They had FedEx, they yeah. had UPS, yeah. they they had, ain't been a good hoe down in much. <laughs> they had grandma's soul food kitchen. Me, ain't me, a, me, DJ Boo, and like four other niggas, the only ones holding it down. I'm like, damn, everybody quit. I told you, DJ Boo got on my bus. Yeah, yeah silly as shit. He's like, damn, this is how the buses look down. Like, you ain't been on one since the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> little civil rights. Just apartheid. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Fuck you, nigga. <laughs> Shout out, boo. But yeah, no, it's like the 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 reality of it is, is people heart really don't be in shit. Like me, I really, really like. We in this. Like yeah. this is what we doing. It's like you know we we put a lot of work in behind the scenes, a lot of back and forth discussions, kind of talks, and idea throwing, dart throwing. Like it's yeah. a lot to go on. So it's like yeah, like get it fucked up. We do make it look kind of effortless because we just throw the mics on and just go. But this shit took years to mold and manifest into it that took shit. Fucking four prior to this last year or whatever run, year and a half run that we on. It took. Four years of muscle memory of creating this shit because it either mm. no matter how you slice it because it was a four or five month ramp up period before we even did one fucking show right right like it was all this planning that went into it because it's like yo we don't want to do this shit and fall flat on our fucking face and look like assholes like, and, I, and I realize now like I got people that come up to me and just ask me about every part of media I got motherfuckers coming to me like yo I'm trying to do a YouTube channel and it'd be like I don't even have a YouTube right. channel <laughs> but it's just like you know some shit show me. My whole thing is, if I take the time out of my day to help or show everybody every little thing, I told you the crazy nigga the other day came up to me, yo, I'm trying to do a podcast. Right. I'm like, so you're not crazy no more? Like, Not this week. Because <laughs> you was crazy last time I seen you. Like, but he was like, no, I want to do a podcast. And I'm like, hey, man, look, it's crazy people out there, so you might have a listening base. Right. He's like, what I got to do? I'm like, just cut the mics on. He was like, bet. He just walked off. I'm like, going to do some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just, you know, it, I think what it is is, like I said, I've had people hit me this week about all, last couple of weeks, about all kinds of different little things yeah. and little, ju- and people, pe- what what I say, I can smell money, nigga. Like, yeah. I, like people can see success. Yeah. They can smell, they know when it's there. They know when it's looming. They know what's going on. And that's all people really want is the success. They that's don't, it. they don't give a shit about. What do, like, it's like, what do I got to do to get where I'm trying to get? Like, y'all don't, up? like, y'all probably don't even dig it that I got up today at 5.30 in the morning. It's 10 o'clock at night. Right. You know why? Because I had to go to work, and then I came here, and we doing shows. Plural. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't see that part of it. They don't see you out with 93. You look like an Amazon driver. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> Dog. They don't see that part of it. That the merch got, we got hosed on the end of the, on the merch, not being there when it was supposed to be there. So yeah. now we got to physically go and, and deliver these, this shit. Yeah. Like, you know, with the 40 people cribs in the last fucking two days. No. Then I was in FedEx today with this many fucking packages <laughs> just to turn around. I had to put them back in my car. Man, man, straight hit him with the, hey, look, dog, we close. Hit me with the, minutes. what you about to do? <laughs> what you about to get into? <laughs> He, he came up, he said, uh, he said, all these going to different addresses. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, this ain't going to work at yeah. all. You don't. He, he you said, don't. yeah, no, you want to pre, you want to prepackage these. You don't put stickers on these already and then bring them back yeah, and drop them off. You don't come in here at 550 with all this, <laughs> man. What's wrong with you? Like, Saturday, nigga, I'm going home. Going home, my man. Yeah. Real talk. No one sees the hard work part, so they only see the success part. So the success makes people jump into it. And we said this on Patreon. Let's make this point. We ain't salute to Joe Button. He just completed 500 episodes of his podcast. A milestone. Only other person I think that did that shit is Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's the only other one. That shit ain't no easy feat. And the thing is, he, like us, ain't halfway to where we going. We ain't 25% the way of where we going. No. Like Joe Button, I know Joe Button is a machine with that Mm -hmm. podcast shit. Like, say what you want about him. That motherfucker's a machine. He don't miss. He's doing four, five, six shows a week. Mm-hmm. He don't stop. He ain't... 2,000 ain't his limit. 2,500 ain't his limit. The craziest part about Joe is he can make an entire show out of one single... One topic. One topic, one piece of media. <laughs> Three-hour show. Dog. Three hours and 34 minutes. That's hard as fuck. 
Because I feel like at times with us, it's like, yo, when we're like, all right, we scraping the pot with this. Joe thing. did a whole show about what is a stream worth. Yeah. And why isn't podcast streaming considered the same as music streaming? And why don't we get royalties the same way that artists do? Five hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, that shit is no easy feat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like the whole thing is just like, yeah, it's one thing to start. It's another thing to continue. And it's a whole nother animal to never stop. Right. Continuing is, oh yeah, we did uh 250 shows in five years. That's that's and and, and the Patreon helped us close the gap on mm-hmm. that. That's the continuing. The never stopping is Joe Rogan, episode 1407. Yeah. Shit like that's the never stopping shit. Right. Like for episode 1407, episode eight eighteen ninety one, right. shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Another, academics, another motherfucker. Do not stop. He streamed four to six days a week, plus two podcasts a week, plus fucking uh, featured on other podcasts, Fresh and Fit, this and this, interviewing this motherfucker in L.A. with Van Lathan. Here, like, motherfuckers don't, don't be stopping, man. Because yeah. at the end of the day, the whole reason why you get into media is that there's no ceiling to it. Right. You can create as much media and make as much money as the fuck you want. Right. Once you create the the following. Right. Like for us, our whole thing is we underground kings. Motherfucking Bun B and Pimp C. Right. We're. I just said right eight times. <laughs> we're relegated to the fact that our audience is the victory for us. Right. Fuck ah. the mass media and the success. Fuck the. Oh, you, you was on Shade Room and fuck that. Our audience is the win because when I do a live, when we do a live show and I look out in the crowd and I see 210 people or whatever the fuck in that room that all paid a premium to be there, that's having a great time, that look phenomenal, that all got careers and businesses, that's the win. Yes. That's the win. Fuck I the, try not to say right. Fuck the sensationalism and all that bullshit. And same thing, like a Rory and Maul. Them motherfuckers went on, a, since leaving Joe's podcast, went on a four-month run of just, we here, we there. We with, we with fucking uh, with, with, with Six Lack Black. We with motherfucking Earl Sweatshirt. We with Detroit Dust Bowl. We, motherfuckers is working. You gotta work. <laughs> like, you gotta fucking work, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, like people, people look at podcasts and like it's easy and like it's low-hanging fruit. Certain certain topics, especially that that dating pool of pot, it's low hanging fruit because the shade room needs content to fucking monetize. Mm-hmm. The shade room in the spiritual world and gossip and all they need sensational the stories to of it grab is, hold. I, I, of. I peep it a lot on Twitter, Facebook. We hate each other. Absolutely, men oh, hate man. women and women hate men. So it's like you could easily just do that all day, and you're it's gonna endless. Have, it's endless. It could never stop. Let me tell y'all how niggas ain't shit today, y'all. And that's going to have 180,000 yeah. views. Next, John. Let me tell, let me tell you tell when y'all I rediscovered these... niggas ain't shit. Yeah, let me tell you how these bitches ain't shit, y'all. 230,000 views. Yeah. It's just what it is. 200 podcast episodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> bitches ain't shit the allegory. Yeah. <laughs> like, this shit like fucking uh, the Odyssey. So to bring it all back, y'all complain about the shit, but this is the shit y'all pay This is what y'all interact with. This is, this what, is what y'all watch on YouTube. This is what y'all fucking the clips that y'all share on y'all social media and shit like that. If you don't fuck with it, don't say nothing. Ignore it. Right. Purgatory is worse than negative attention. Bruh. If you just say nothing and just be like, they on some nut ass shit, but don't egg, but don't retweet it and say they on some nut ass shit so the next person can say, oh yeah, no, they really on some nut ass shit. Oh, this nigga's a bitch ass nigga. It just grows and grows. It's a virus. And by the time you've done that, they done made 700 <laughs> That's why they call it going viral. Yeah. Because it spreads like a virus. Mm-hmm. One From one person to the next. From two people to eight people. From eight people to 35. Like white people with mono. <laughs> right. yeah. They jo- they get they yeah. join up at the kickback yeah. and everybody kiss everybody. One ski weekend. <laughs> it's a wrap. They have mono everywhere. <laughs> It's a fucking rap. So be 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 the change. Be the change that you want to see. If you think that niggas is on fuck shit and they making fuck boy content and all that, don't share it. Don't retweet it. Don't comment on it. Don't do nothing. Do not engage with it. It will not. It won't spread. Bruh. It'll stay where the fuck it's at. It'll stay confined to the niche that it exists in. It's like it's why when you get COVID, they say take your ass in the house. Exactly. Because if not, it will spread. Yeah. Y'all are spreading video COVID. Yeah, y'all yeah. are spreading audio COVID. And then y'all mad that y'all got COVID. Right. It's 
not how it works. Why are you in Citizens Bank <laughs> Park when you got the COVID? Take your ass in the house. Nah, nah, real shit. Take your ass home. That was a good breakdown. Any other topics over there? Uh oh, Megan Good is back on the market. Ah, Birdman hand rub. Kind of over Megan Good. I love her, man. I love her. Even at 40, I still love her. It's been a long time. It's been a while. We've been knowing her since she was about 12. She was in Friday. Yeah. Um, she looked really good in that Anger Man, too. Yes. She looked good in there. Well, shit, that was eight years ago. Yeah, she... she but she looked good on... I watched the whole Harlem series in, like, two days on Amazon Prime. She looked so good, man. She said she was eating ass or something. She? They, 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 uh... The guy asked her to eat his ass on the first date. Fellas. And she did not eat it. She did not eat it. Okay. But he, he, he Lambo'd his own doors. Yeah, you it was, said on the, on the it was, show, it was, yeah. it was, uh, it was strange. It was yeah. strange. He went in, but no, I, I love Megan Good. Um, this is essentially an indictment um, against her, the fact that her husband filed for divorce from her because men don't leave. We're loyal like dogs. Like we, we do not leave. Like we will overlook a lot of shit, but you just being, um, you know, pretty much a slut whore and embarrassing. Uh, pretty much anything up to the line of an embarrassing slut whore, men are willing to at least hear you out. So yeah, the fact that her, I'll, listen. <laughs> I'll, I'll at least listen. Yeah. Walk me through this. Even being the, the slut whore, you'll be like, <laughs> all right, just start me at the beginning. Walk me through this. How slutty was how it? How slutty yeah. was it? Men will find a way to forgive. We don't, we don't leave, man. Like, we don't leave. And so for her husband to be like, that's it. Wash my hands of this bitch. Back to the streets from whence you came. It's an indictment against her that essentially either she wasn't serving her wifely duties or she did something even more dastardly than we suspect. Um, they gave us the whole speech about you know, um, you know, this is amicable. It's it, it's not amicable. Like he's a he's a very religious gentleman. He's a pastor. Like I will say this. I know she's like happy. She ain't got to get up and go to church. <laughs> no more. Yeah, <laughs> no more. Because that'd be like kind of in the way <laughs> on a Sunday morning. You know. Like so, let me get this straight. You go to church. Every week, <laughs> and I, you know, I imagine they got to be there like first, right? You know, because so, seven a.m. service, they there at five twenty. Yeah. I know she, I know that shit got old quick. Yeah, you can just you can just watch it now. Yeah, so I mean, I we suspected it for months that they was uh, broken up. There was no, you know, she did had, we? I did. Oh, I, I, I was. I'm on Megan Good Watch. I, don't give a I, I follow her from people. the podcast speech. Uh, I'm on Megan Good Watch. I'm I, trying didn't, to I never even good. heard of the boy she was married to. Oh, Devon Franklin. Yeah. I, yeah. Be religious gentleman, whatever. Is he like the bull that cheated on his wife? The husky bull. Remember the the wife was sitting next to him. Oh no 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 no. He's a he's he's like a real spiritual leader. Okay. Remember he's he's not like one of them like do as I say not as I do bulls. Like he the real deal as far as like in that religious world okay. and all that shit. Like he's real straight up and down. Like he wasn't selling no water. No, no he wasn't. No, he wasn't no. selling no holy water. No, not in the cup. Did you know like the that. boy who did the, the what's his name that cheated on the wife thing? What was his name? The husky boy. Remember the wife oh, was next uh, to him with the bonnet? Cameron was on his ass. What is his name? Um Oh uh damn. It's something Derek Jackson. Derek Jackson. I, I thought his <laughs> last name was Jenks. <laughs> and then when somebody was like Jackson, I'm like, what is it? Yeah, he spelled it like Jacks in. And I'm like Y'all are crazy for <laughs> listening to a nigga who spells his the thing name with, like the that. The thing with Derek Jackson was... I did a, I swear to God, I thought it was Jenks. Every man with a working brain was like, this nigga's lying. <laughs> like, the niggas knew. Yeah. Like, niggas was telling women for months, like, this nigga is lying. Like, I grew up with niggas like him. He's a snake oil salesman. Like, this nigga fucking all yeah. the bitches. Like, he is pandering. And sure enough, he got fucking caught cheating, made his wife fucking come do a PSA with him, looking a mess. No. Remember, she... I don't know if you ever seen the joint when she was like, uh... Cause they came at how she looked in the yeah. joint, and then she made a video. She was like, "You see a bonnet, and I see a helmet of salvation." I was like, "This bitch is nuts." Yeah, no, she drank the Kool Aid. Yeah. He, he brainwashed her. You know what I'm yeah. saying, I, I applaud him for effectively. I'm gonna clap that. Up. I applaud him for, for for effectively brainwashing his bitch because. I haven't said this on the podcast in a while, <laughs> fellas. That's listening. It's the end of the show. I can yeah. I can kick this. Ain't nobody gonna pick up on it. Uh. The only way to really win with modern women is to effectively brainwash your bitch. If your bitch don't believe that you're the greatest nigga of all time, that you got the best dick of all time, that that there's nothing else out there for her, she's going to fuck around on you. Like, yeah. it's too many options. Women can fuck around and end up in Dubai or Senegal tomorrow with a prince, with a sheik. Yeah. You don't have that much money. You got sheik money? No. 
Fuck no. I got car money. <laughs> car money. <laughs> Fresh start money. <laughs> I ain't you got no chic money? Oh. Fucking Dubai money. Yeah. You shitting me? You know what I'm saying? You got to brainwash it, bitch, man. My, one of my uh, homies, Silvermain Nameless, he was like, you got to chain her to the radiator. At some point, it might come to that. He was like, the the, the house could be new. It ain't even a radiator. You got to go get a radiator. <laughs> you got to go find one. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you got to go get a go, yeah, go you, to you, junkyard. You, get a radiator. You, you and Lowe's like, this going to sound strange. <laughs> got me ready. I need a radiator. I need a radiator. He said, go to the junkyard. Get a radiator. <laughs> Just bring it to the house. Got, got a radiator. Yeah, that, that be you. Let me see your wrist yo, real fast. Yo, real shit. These are your quarters right here. <laughs> yeah, stay here. <laughs> but, um... We started this about who? Oh, uh, not Jinx. There, uh, it was Megan. Good. Megan it started Good. about Megan. Yeah, Good. Megan Good. yeah, so Megan Good's back on the market. Uh, I'm looking for you, baby. You know what I'm saying? Um, my girl gave me a gave me a hall pass. Um, I got at least like I got enough money for about a six month fling for it. Probably get too expensive for me. It's just Chanel bags is going up. Uh, but you know I'm willing to uh, I'm willing to max out all the cards. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of cards. Got about thirteen credit cards. I remember my, to max them all out. I remember my old chick I was with before Leah. She remember she was like um on some like she had a thing for uh Chris Brown. Okay. And she was like, yeah, like if I ever got opportunity, you know I got to get it, Chris Brown. I'm like, <laughs> Breezy ain't fucking you. <laughs> <laughs> this is wishful thinking. <laughs> this is wishful thinking, man. <laughs> you crazy? <laughs> I said you crazy. All Chris Brown girls look the same. Yeah, I said you crazy. But she was like, nah, like, like real shit, like, we should have passes if you come across somebody, you know, whatever, whatever, you know. She was like, I already know, Chris Brown, Usher, and Will Smith, those my three, so. You got three, I'm like, I started naming the names, she was like, who are they? I'm like, they get on my bus. So, <laughs> That's what I'm fucking. Hey, listen, what you want me to do, you know what I'm saying? They get on my bus. We broke up in 2010, <laughs> that shit didn't last, didn't last long. But yeah, yeah, but motherfuckers <laughs> is crazy. Me, I wish you could have seen. She was like, "I get Chris Brown." That's that, I'm on that. I'm like, "Freezy, you crazy?" Not even looking at you. <laughs> said, you Stop crazy. this. Knock this off. Hey, dog. But uh, I got nothing else for this. This has been two hours of fun. Uh, anything? Patreon. Patreon, Patreon. Chad's giving away money, y'all. Giving away money, man. Chad's I'm trying to. Get, I've, I've been telling y'all for months. I'm really on it every show now. I'm trying to get y'all this money. Patreon. We hit 500 subscribers and stay there and stay there and stay there. That's the key here. I've said it over and over again. And stay there because Patreon has some weird accounting shit. And stay there. Thousand dollars, which is 500 dollars. Two times we gonna have two winners. 500, 500. 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. We about halfway there now. We have 4.92 fucking subscribers. Uh, on YouTube, we hit ten thousand thousand dollars out of my pocket. Matt and Dan don't got nothing to do with that. We hit a thousand subscribers on Patreon. I'm giving away five thousand dollars. No cap. Ain't no ain't no podcast, no web show, no uh no series out there. Get y'all five thousand dollars cash in one shot. It never happened. I I you're not you you're not lying. I haven't heard never happened. Yeah, yeah. never happened. Yeah. Breaking bread with my audience. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I have to use my fake hair page. <laughs> <laughs> Real shit. Like in the winter is man ditchel. Yo, real <laughs> shit. That's funny as shit. Please contact us to collect your five thousand know. dollar prize. But uh, yeah, I got nothing. I'm going to Charlotte. I'll holler at y'all. Enjoy yourself. You are gonna have a ball. I'm gonna be here in the trenches, cold as shit. And I'm back on the couch with a bum knee. Shit, come down uh later on the week for the dinner. Oh, yeah. It's mm. 94 people coming to dinner anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> pull up. About to have us a big-ass hoe down in the middle of Roof Chris out this motherfucker. Hoot nanny. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, man, uh, I'm out of here. As Thanks. we say every week, man, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Be safe wherever y'all at. Make sure that Omarion don't get up on you. Um, yeah, that's it, man. We out. Yeah. Peace. <laughs>